All right, let's see who's first. <laughs> oh my, it was funny because uh, now I've started doing the uh, the short review before the long laid back discussion review, and uh, I'm always on pins and needles when I'm doing the uh, the short live review because there's no do overs. I just have to run and gun. Um, feel like I'm I'm just running into a big pile of fogginess and, and we'll see see what happens but it seems like it works out pretty good that was a fun one I've, I've actually looked at this uh this bottle before and uh but it's been a while it's been probably about a year um i've been sipping on it as you can see uh slowly but surely over i guess it's probably been a year or so since i've uh, started and uh, i didn't look at the the original review at all so i should probably go back and see what uh, if I've got anything different out of it or if it's uh, about the same. Um, I don't think I had as much appreciation with this dram the first time I had it. It was, um, I think the minerality parts of it are more prevalent at the beginning, especially the nut pour. Once you get past like the halfway down, that's I think when you start getting really your, your crazy uh, amounts of fruit. I mean, it's a true fruit bomb. Um, so if you do like your light, I mean, it's light to medium, uh, no strawberry, raspberry, all the fruits are like your, uh, your lemons, your oranges, your white grapes, your pears, your, um, gosh, I'm, I'm, uh, pineapples, your, uh, light fruits, both citrus and not citrus, uh, really, uh, a plethora of all the, uh, like a really high quality fruit cocktail, if that makes any sense. Hey, last cause. I was hoping you'd find your way back here, man. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, it's a shame because I, I saw like two or three people in the uh, in the channel, but um, just to get that short review done, I have to cut it off and start it back. But glad you made it. Have you ever had this one before? I'm just curious if uh, you've ever tried one. Just looking at it in the store, I, I wouldn't really think much of it. I mean, it's it's uh, not horrible. It's funny. It's the gentle dram, which I thought was uh, amusing on the uh, on the front. Not technically my wheelhouse, but it actually surprised me of what you can do with a forty percent whiskey. It does not taste like one, um, which to me is a good thing. Um, not really available by me. Oh, okay, Mister French, good to see you. Uh, not sure if I've seen you before, but welcome to the channel either way. You said you're back. I guess you used to uh, maybe come by one before I had a little break for four months there. But, yeah, I'm definitely trying to make it a more of a, a common, um, a common uh, steady occurrence. We'll put it that way. Uh, 16 is not a common age statement. No, it's not. Uh, other than the log of one 16, I'm trying to think of any other 16s. Uh, Lafroy, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, you don't really see that. I'm kind of looking around to see if I see any uh, stand out as being a 16. Everfeldy's got a 16. Um, but yeah, I'd say typically you got 12, 15, 18 are your common, I won't say denominators, but you get what I mean. Uh, 12, 15, 18, uh, Holland Park's like a master of that. And they even do like tens and they've got a, a a 25, a 21. I mean, they got all over the place, but uh, they even have a, a 16 now with their Trevor retail. Uh, but just talking core, you're, you're definitely right. Yeah, Abelauer 16, uh, one more 16. There's a, there, there are some out there. Just, uh, oh, okay. So you're live with um, Malt User Raw back. You guys rock. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, Malt's going to, should be on here in a second if he's not already. Uh, he joined on the uh, short review. Hopefully, he realizes that uh, I do one and then I start a new one. I might even get him on the show tonight if he's uh, available. I'll have to see if he pops back on. Um, hey, Tripper, good to see you, man. It's been a while. Is it floral from Lost Cause? It, it, it is. It does have floral properties, but the fruit is so much in your face that you don't get overwhelmed with florals if you're kind of an anti-floral guy. Um the only floral, floral notes, man, it's, it's a, I'll just say light florals because it's really hard to pinpoint what exact flower or what exact. It's not soapiness. It's like a, more of a light flower. Um, I'm trying to think of what a sunflower would smell like. Probably something like that or like a, um, one of the more brighter 
yellow flowers. But not, it matches with the fruit well, where it kind of blends together. So you're, you're, it's not like a, a flower bomb by any means. It's definitely more of a fruit bomb, thankfully. But there are some floral notes in there. You know, there are some mineral notes in there to balance it. I do think it's well balanced. It's just not very complex. There's not a whole lot. I mean, I could I pulled out on my notes when I was going through it uh, earlier in the short review. I mean, I could pit, pull some stuff out, but it's not an easy dram to uh, pull a boatload of stuff out. I had to, as you can see, I had to really take a good look at it before I felt like um, diving, diving in. I mean, I did a review, like I said, uh, about a year ago and went over just kind of in, in during the live discussions that we usually have and went over it, but, um, hmm. I just like the fact that even though I felt a little cheated with the 40% and the coloring and then and the chill filtering, the H statement helps a bit. And the fact that it uh, does have an oomph to it with it comes to the, uh, the viscosity, made me feel a little bit better but still definitely not a 3.75 or a 4 or anything like that it's a 3.5 it's but it's above average um if this was a 12 it would probably be a 2.75 i'm thinking i don't think it's gonna have um what this one it, it, it's it's just not there zebra hunting night uh-oh i'm afraid i better go back up trooper how you doing man starting on knob creek and on the uh, Spring Bank 10, that's an excellent choice. Too bad it's $75 usually here at least, but it's still an excellent choice. Isn't that crazy? 10, a 10 year old, 75. Uh, but it's okay. I'm sure when Kilhoman has a readily available 10 or 12, it's not going to be uh, even as cheap probably as a 70. It's probably going to be like $90. But they can get away with it because they're pretty good. Um, Lost as Jason, uh, so I'm more like 16. And Oh, GM Mortlock 15 at the same store. That's interesting, huh? You probably don't see that very often either, I imagine, unless it's a huge specialty type store. In picture form, of course, went <laughs> zebra hunting night. I'm not sure what the zebra hunting thing is. What do you mean by zebra hunting? I'm just curious. Uh, can't find Tomatool anywhere in Louisiana. That's a shame. Uh, here, luckily, they do have uh, the 16, and they had another one. I think it was an NAS, and they might even had a third one that was even older, like an 18 or 21. And for the um, – I think it was a 21 for the price. I just couldn't justify blindly just jumping into a 21-year-old a uh, whiskey from a distillery that I didn't know at the time. Um, now that I know them, I might take the gamble if uh, – I can't remember what the price was. So I remember this This was a 70. Uh, the Tom and Tool, they had – oh, they only had the 12, and it was 60, uh, 65. That's the funny thing. They have a $65 12-year, and they have a $70 16-year. Tell me that makes sense. <laughs> That's crazy. Those are the tool, the two Tommen tools. I have to say that real fast. The two Tommen tools they have, um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is. I was wondering when you'd drop by here, uh, uh, Mount Laser. I might get you on here in a second. Uh, nice. We still don't have uh, the new Mortlocks here. Oh wow. Yeah, I've seen the twelve only at this store. Um, they only carry the 12. I do know they have a, I think they have a 12, 16, 18, 20. They have a lot of years uh, that are out, out there. Price gets a little crazy once you get past the 18. I'm thinking about trying either the 18 or the 20, but it's hard to pull the trigger blindly unless you see some people that you know actually try it and like it. It's one of those, uh, I'm not quite sure if I want to go that route or not. Um, but hey, do you, Malt? We'll have to talk in a second. Uh, get you in Paul uh, Sh Port Charlotte 10 is around that price too. Wow. That sounds outstanding though. Port Charlotte 10, but yeah, they didn't have a, an A statement for quite a while. And I think that's why they're uh, able to uh, 
lure you in with those NASs and then they hook you. It's almost like if Ardbeg had like an Uga doll that was a 12 year old statement, you know, you would go and buy it like in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know, you would. And if you say you wouldn't, you know, you're lying. <laughs> I just had a tell until 16 earlier in the evening. Uh, the 40% is probably its worst feature, but I'll get another. Hey, uh, cheers to you, Doug. Uh, I think you might be new to the channel. And uh, yeah, I I do think that maybe it is uh, not helping with the complexity issue there. Um, since it is a 16, you would think you get that. Uh, I'm just glad that the mouth coat tastes as a higher ABV than 40. Uh, did you get that at all? Um, uh, Doug, because uh, I, I think it it doesn't taste like a thin whiskey, like a Glengoin or like a, um, something with a really thin mouth coat. I'm trying to think of another one that, that comes to mind. Unfortunately, they're like the first ones on my list typically because is I guess Glen Farkless maybe might be in the thinner side. I love Glen Farkless, though. I'm not knocking them by any means. And I love Glen Goyne. Uh, teapot Dram is outstanding. Uh, cast Strength is outstanding. But the mouth coat is just... I do prefer it to have a little bit more of the uh, oomph to it if I can get it, but um, let's see. Telex whiskey tech from uh, let me. One thing I just found out uh, just watching the other time was these guys can actually click on these things and make them show up. I didn't even know you could do that until recently. So let's look and uh, see what we got. If this works. There we go. Telex uh, absolutely seventy five for a ten year. It's way too high. What are you What are you paying for it? If you don't mind me asking, I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, you are zebra hanging tonight, zebra. Almost empty bottle in the four dummy sling. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was their uh, <laughs> their their sling zebra bottle. I like that. <laughs> that's funny. I'll have to uh, use that. Another uh, ten. That's pricey. Is Port Charlotte? Yep. Yeah. Feel free to email it. Okay, I will. Um, 12 year Ugi would be magic. You know, it's true. Hey, Dram, good to see you. Uh, I was hoping you stopped by. How's California? Hope you're doing well. Hopefully, uh, everyone you know is well. I know they're having a, a better time of this than we are on the East Coast. And uh, hopefully, uh, it stays that way as far as uh, you guys not having any spikes um, anytime soon. And what are you drinking, Dram, if you don't mind me asking? Last cause, uh, our big mix at 23 year old Uga doll. I mean, I know they have, um, let's see. Oh, once. Oh, okay. Did they have a special name in that last cause? Did, did it actually say like Ardbeg Ugadol and then have a 23 on it? Or what was the presentation of it like? I'm just curious and because I, I will want to go look it up and see if I can find a, find it a lucky, like a, find it like a hundred dollar scratch off on the road kind of lucky. But uh I'm sure it's not a cheaply priced. Abelar 16 is thin. Okay, the Abelars are on the thinner side. The Abenas seemed a little thick, but it's probably because it was 57% alcohol. Um, the 16, you know what the ABV on that is, uh, malt? Uh, has a good mouthfeel and malty butter. Yeah, I, I cheers on that one, man. It definitely does. I did a... Um, if you Doug, if you missed the uh, the short review when I go into the the real details of what I got, uh, definitely go check it out after this uh, live if you don't mind. Um, oh, the twenty something twenty three is that a? I didn't know that was an, a part of the Uga doll. I did. I actually got to taste that once. Uh, my friend Aquaman, Mister Lee, was um, we were meeting up at a DC Expo. He brought a bottle of that, and I about I about shit my pants. <laughs> it tasted so good. <laughs> it was that good. Uh, he also brought a tw uh, God. He brought a, a 21 year old fine oak uh, McAllen, also very good. And he brought a uh, Brook Lottie uh, Black Arts uh, 4.1. Man, he brought the trifecta with him that year. <laughs> that was awesome. Hopefully, he'll get a chance to uh, stop by and say, "Hey, uh, he's been very uh, uh, incognito off the uh, grid, though." So I'm hoping he's okay. Um, I haven't heard anything from him. I did hear from the rest of my Scotch group that I uh, used to do this delivery tour with. Everyone except him, so hopefully he's okay. Um, Malt says uh, spring bank prices seem to have increased last month. Maybe the tariffs. Yeah, that is a, a big issue. I know with petite sellers, at least uh, I, I deal with uh, 
them a, a, very often. He, he he told me like up front that there's a, a couple of distilleries that are trying to eat the cost of the tariffs. Uh, he told me a couple of names and I can't remember what, who they were. And sadly, I think Old Pulteney might have actually been one of them. Um, but sadly, they can't do it forever. And um, after the three months after they added the tariff, they did, they could have added more. Thankfully, they didn't. They could have took it away, which I wish they did. But um, that part didn't change. And I think it comes back up in May. With all this that's going on, hopefully they'll look at that as being a, an issue of messing with people's alcohol. You know, delirium trimmings are not a, a present thing to go through. I would have a feeling. <laughs> and so, the, you know, the easier access you get, the better off some people definitely would think would be uh, to an extent. But either way, um, making it unaffordable is just as bad as not having it available. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but hopefully that is uh, a temporary thing if we're lucky because 75 was my top on the 10 i wouldn't even i mean maybe 80 but that's stretching it it really is because you can get a 15 or an 18 for a uh, reasonable price tip usually but i have to look at the prices again after these uh, tariffs to see yeah doing okay here from dram or uh sheltered in place earlier most places in the country okay no drink yet finishing up work oh that's right you're five hours back well, I got a little early start for you. 16 is a sad 40%, and the same as this one. That's uh, that's crazy. I know he's in California, but I forgot what's shitty. Uh, it might be in San Francisco. I can't remember. Uh, let me get that uh, that link to you there. Uh, let's see. Invite. There we go. And you want an email? I'll take it. So let me uh, try to get that copy. And man, forgive me for a second because I have to, uh, I might have to get the old headphones and all that plugged in to make this work. Let's see. Mountain user, there you go. And I put it in the subject and the, uh, the subject and the, um, body so that hopefully should be easier to pick up let me get my headset because uh i think i'm gonna need it for this let's see where did i put the headset <laughs> that's always the fun part i didn't plan on a on a visitor but it's good enough to get it. oh my goodness watch me knock something over that'd be horrible there we go <laughs> okay Nothing like being prepared, right? <laughs> this is not a professional establishment. <laughs> Heck, I can barely uh, function as it is. All right, let's see if this makes any difference. I hope you guys can still hear me. Hopefully. And... Uh, I got the speakers on the headset, so I think we're good. So as soon as he shows up in the... Uh, in the bottom there, I should be able to get him in and go from there. I'm just going to this other monitor on this other side to uh, get something. There we go. Mount user, uh, oh, Bay Area, yes, okay. Yeah, I had a feeling it was in that vicinity. <laughs> but um, have you had this, uh, have, has anybody had this one uh, besides, uh, I know that uh, Doug's Doug was talking about it with me, the Tumman Tool uh, 16. I'm just curious to see what you thought. It's funny how, um, I mean, it definitely has the fruit aspect of the uh, being a space side, but man, it does have some really nice florals and some other things going on to uh, balance it out that have that Highland esque uh, character to it. It's so uh, it's so low in ABV though. I'll probably have to have like ten uh, drams of this to, <laughs> to uh, get through the night. Might as well pour a big one, right? There he is. I think I see two of you. Uh oh. I guess I'll just add one and hope for the best. <laughs> hey man, how's it going? How you doing, man? Um, there you go. I can hear you good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you all right. How are let me fix my camera. It's all sorts of wonky. This uh, side thing always throws me for a loop. 
Yeah, there's a couple different, there's a way you can like widescreen it. I think there's like a wider screen option that you can use too. Um, is it one of these? Let's see. Yeah. Yep. There it is. There we go. Well, yeah, I should have done nice. that. I should have done that to begin with. Right. <laughs> hey, you know, it's new technology in a sense. I haven't used it that much either. So how's it going, man? Nice pretty, to see you. Pretty good. You too. Yeah. This is much better quality wise too. I'm surprised how uh, just shortening the screen can make such a difference on the resolution almost. It seems like. Yeah, I agree. So Tom and Tal tonight, huh? Yeah, it's um uh, I did it like about a year or so ago and um you know, I, I at the time I was doing reviews pretty quickly once I got right past the neck pour and I thought it's been a while and before I kill the bottle I might as well take another look just to see, you know, if there's much difference to it. I don't think it was a huge difference, but I do think I got, you know, some more things out just mature of palate that type of thing you know after yeah. a year you go through a lot of whiskey in a year i'm sure don't you yeah man that's for sure is that a space cider yeah this is a space side and um it's funny because it tastes a bit like a uh like a uh, highland but it does have a, it's a fruit bomb it's definitely uh, more fruity than anything else so kind of goes by the profile Did you catch i don't think i've had anything from tom and tom not a yeah not not one of those well-known you know, Lagavulin, Talisker type of right. uh, distilleries, but it uh, they've been around for quite a while. And uh, this bottle looks like it's funny because if you even if you look at it, it looks like they they printed this like in 1995. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see the fonts and the a whole, little bit. Of, it's a lot outdated. It's kind of funny. Did you hear about my talk about the Glenlivet part of this? Um, I caught part of it, but so do you know the re like what's the reasoning behind how they can use the Glenlivet name on there? Were they all part of the same, are they like subsidiaries or something? There's a good article I was reading that goes into more detail uh, when you get a chance. Just uh, look up, uh, let's see if I still have it up here. I might, if I'm lucky. The um, It had something to do, if I remember, I don't think it's going to let me. Um, it had something to do with the region I think being called Glenlivet. They were trying to base it off oh, the region. Oh, sure, 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 sure. And um, and I think that's why you see all of the uh, the the Glenlivets on you know when they put their name out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but interesting. Kind of, but the weird thing is, like on Tom Nivellin, Glenmora, and um, and Spayburn, they don't put it on their their bottling like these guys do. But this is an old one, and it's funny. This is probably um, like some of these awards go back to like two thousand three. No joke. Um, 2003 to like 2007. So this has probably been sitting on the shelf for quite a while. Uh, I don't think it's been redone because, um, you know, they, they um, I don't want to say that. Does anybody know if, if this has been a redone? Uh... Yeah, I'm actually reading about them right now. Oh, so this is interesting, right? So they're, this, yeah, they're like in the quote Glenlivet estate. There you go. So their distillery is like within this these grounds in located in literally Glenlivet, Scotland. And so I wonder if there was something history behind that or something like that. That's exactly what I was. Yeah, that sounds about the same as. I yeah, was it said. Too. Yeah, it said there was like yeah the the area around there became the Glenlivet distillery. Oh, that's interesting, huh? Little quirks. I'm surprised Dram's never tried it before. Um, but it, it it is one of those. I mean, if 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 I was. Um, getting somebody a gift like like you for example if i was looking for somebody that knew their whiskey but you know i didn't have a ton of money i don't know nothing about it. whiskey man i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> i know you how know to what, drink it but <laughs> you know what i mean yeah 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 if if i um you know was looking for a gift and i didn't have a ton of cash to throw into it i couldn't afford the two three hundred a bottle that you deserve and but if i could oh. afford you know 70 bucks you know and, and throw some yeah. your way this would be a, a, a really good eye opener to space sides i think i think it's a good thing Entry. You said that was a, like it's that's like a sixteen-year-old forty percent, or is that Oloroso? He was Oloroso. Not to no, make you go through the whole review again, but no, this is an ex bourbon, all sixteen years an ex bourbon cast, supposedly. Yeah, I was surprised because um, it's not very oaky. I mean, it does have some oakiness to the finish, but it's uh, the fruit and the florals and the sweetness and the minerality are so well balanced that you don't really get you know any of one thing too much, which is what I kind of appreciate it. And uh, why well, yeah, give it, 
when I gave it, it a three point five with that with you know with oh, nice. with the balance, you know, three point five out of five for me is uh, a little yeah. bit above average. You know, it's it's a decent whiskey. Yeah, it sounds like something you know a score like that makes when you give it that score, I definitely gets on my radar. Yeah, and I, I recall I I know that you know we've talked about this in the past that you you kind of like the ideally the the kind of ex bourbon and ex sherry maturations on whiskeys because you get a little bit of everything right and that one uh that one as you said is just ex bourbon but i know that you've mentioned in the past that that's kind of your wheelhouse um on the maturations you like because you're not big into the sherry bombs right no i am i, I do like the um uh, the hmm. sherry bombs i do like the peat bombs i do oh, yeah, I love <laughs> i do love the the my favorite are, are when they're crossed together um and i do love the ex bourbon if it's got like a maturation and like a saw turns or some other cask with this one it's interesting because typically i wouldn't like it a lot especially being in such a low abv but the the, but the fruit and the and the, the the taste is so well balanced with it, even though it's not complex, it's easy to get into. If that makes any sense, you know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds like it's a good change of pace. You know, a little different than kind of what you maybe are always drinking on and stuff. And you know, I always I like to make space for that. I'm actually uh, I've recently picked up a couple new things. And um, tonight I've been sipping on this. Well, right now I'm doing this. Um, this is the Glenfiddich. IPA cask. It's part of that experimental uh, series. Yeah, this I've been, seen. This is, this is an interesting one. Um, I've been drinking a little bit on that. I got a uh, Johnny Walker 18, which I got at a really stupidly cheap price. I got it for like under 60 bucks. I just had to pull the trigger on that. How did you do that? <laughs> um, I, I, this, Didn't involve uh, firearms, did it? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, no, no. It didn't. didn't uh, thank God. And, I'm, and I got this Glen, Glenallochy 15, which is, I think, somewhat new in the U.S. market. you familiar with any of the Glenallochy stuff? Yeah. Um, I've actually been lucky enough to have two. I have an 18 back here that I liked, and, I, and the 10PX um, was really, really good. There's a 10PX, if you if you don't mind the sweet factor, the, the Pedro Jimenez stuff. Um, it's really tasty. What do you think of the 15? Have you tasted it yet? Yeah. So the, this one is a... Um, this one is it's Oloroso NPX. Mm. It's, um, so forty six percent non chill filter, natural color, all that good stuff. It is um, so it's kind of the, in that same vein as the um, Glendronic fifteen revival. I don't think it's quite as good as the fifteen revival. The, the fifteen revival, I think, if I had to choose, I mean, this one was about twenty bucks cheaper, so it's like, eh, but. Yeah. The Glenjonic 15 Revival is just so damn good. Um, this one, I think, it's got a little bit more. I don't know. There's a couple. There's a couple off notes in it that I can't quite figure out yet. I mean, I did just open it recently, so I'm kind of giving it some time. But I mean, it's a good pour. I think if I was going to, you know, put it on a score chart, it's probably in that three, three point five range. I don't know, maybe three. Have Whereas you got the Revival, down yet? no, no, I haven't got okay. that far. So I'm kind of holding him back holding back my judgment on it yet and giving it some time because it's you know 15 years somewhat complex but it's a sherry bomb for sure um but not quite i don't know the glenfiddich or the glendronic revival i just, i really really like i think i gave is that one a ultra, four is it ultra dry the the Craig, uh, the uh, glenelicky no so it's not there's none of the there's no real like tannic drying finish on this one it's kind That's of juicy to be honest which is interesting um i would like that actually probably yeah i'm gonna put some in the glass probably after i finish this this ipa cast which is also sort of interesting but it's funny because some people and, and i'm glad I, when i do reviews I, I try to just not to go into much whether i like something or not because sure. some people really love a dry finish i've noticed like my friend lee he's you know he's just as well versed as any of us as far as like being able to fine tune and oh, pick yeah, yeah. The nose. but yeah. as far as his preferred finish is he loves the ex bourbon slash you know peat bomb and he loves it just dry as hell <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> to me at least but you know sure sure yeah yeah, I, I, I think it can work. It really just depends on kind of every, you know, it. I think anything like anything can work depending on what everything else happening in the pour, you know. Um, sometimes a nice dry finish can be all right. Like one one thing 
God, what was it? I, it's escaping me now that I, I recall being like a super dry finish. I get more dry finishes off bourbons, to be honest, um, especially younger bourbons that have a lot more kind of, oak, you know, you get a little more of that oaky, that oak barrel influence. But the higher, higher B, ABV, does that Yeah, a little bit on the higher, yeah. I mean, one one that I think of offhand is the, um, well, one of them, yeah, the, the, the older bourbons for sure, because they're just so over oaked by age, you know, 18 year olds, 20 year olds, like not really my jam, but there's a couple of younger ones too. I think like, uh, uh, offhand. I mean, some of the knob Creek, the knob Creek, um, just their standard release. I think it's got kind of that dry finish. I don't know. I notice it more on bourbon, but, um, Dalmore oh, 12, you. Dalmore 12 is one of them that I've noticed that had kind of that. It was almost sulfuric, but it had that kind of dry tannic finish on it. Yeah, it, it's it's funny you bring that up. It's funny because that when I think sulfur, typically I would think like a Benevis or like a, a Bowmore Fifteen Darkest. But you're right, the the Dalmore yeah. does have a slight sulfuric uh, tannin almost. To I it. never had the Dalmore Fifteen. I I actually never bought anything else from Dalmore after the twelve. But the the fifteen is 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 leans more towards the twelve in my opinion. I think you it, you when you talked about it, it's a lot like the 12, 15 is probably just a little more complex. Yeah. The stepping stone is the 18. Now that one is actually is pretty damn good, but I was lucky enough to taste it before they boosted the price up $50. No joke. Like it used to be yeah. like 160, 150 for the 18. Now it's like 230. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> 230 for an 18 year old Dalmore. Isn't that crazy? I, I about, I about like just lost it. <laughs> is that thing? Is that even at above 40% ABV? I think it might be right 43, now. but it's not much if it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know I, I seemed, I, I, I kind of caught on to how they roll. It's kind of scary, really. <laughs> yeah. It's 43%. So Isn't that going. crazy? It's like, well, oh, man, come on, give me the 48 at least for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know. That's, that's a little bit, that's a little bit much. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a chance. I did have that SMWS Delmore bottle that was really good um, as far as independence goes, but I haven't tried a lot of their independent bottles. But I heard they're pretty good. Have you done a lot of them yet? I haven't. Um, I've heard that if you ever do Bowmore or Dalmore, you always want to go independent bottling. Is from what most of these guys tell me. It seems oh, like oh, Bowmore and Dalmore. So yeah, so I um I do have a bottle of the uh. Um, <laughs> DH self is that 43% Dalmore part of the overproof series? <laughs> <laughs> Killing me, man. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Too funny. Um, I have a bottle of Dom Bowmore 15, uh, independent. It's, um, that boutique whiskey company. Nice. And that one is, I think, like 49%. But at the tasting where I ended up purchasing that bottle, they also had a, uh, like a 16 year old Dalmore. Uh, no, no, no. It was higher as a 20 year old Dalmore. Wow. Um, also, you know, it was close to, you know, hovering close to 50%. And, you know, it's amazing when you look at the bottle. I, I, I should grab that boutique bottle eventually tonight and show you just so you can get a kick out of like what a, what a bow, a bow more looks like without the coloring added at 15 years. Cause this thing is like bright as hell. It, sure. Yeah, man. It's like yellow. I mean, you look at the, the how much coloring, you know, Bowmore seems to do a lot of coloring in there. So, that's um, the thing it's like unless it's a, a sherry bomb i just don't see why people want it to be so damn dark anyway <laughs> or with like the peated whiskeys where they're you know you're half of them are in green bottles like, oh yeah like, Lafroigs, like some of the lefroigs that they put color in it's like I don't know. you know they got their reasons that's true that's uh I've, I heard that the green stuff was because of the um, the sunlight, but don't quote, quote me on that. I'm not sure if that's true. Or... Yeah, that's true for beer and stuff, but I always figured, like, with um, – um, um, they're always in tubes. It's, it's kind of like – I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who – normally has their whiskey bottles sitting out like free. I, if I do yeah. set them up on the shelf, I always put the box in front of the bottle anyway. So it's kind of a defeats the whole purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here it is just for, uh, I mean, the thing, the catch with that boutique whiskey company is they do all only these three, seven fives, which is kind of annoying. So they're a bit overpriced, but I mean, look at the, look at the color. That's a Bowmore 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the real deal, though, man. I, I, I see. I think it's beautiful. I, I like a real. Yeah, I mean, compare that to like the darkest, right? I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's like it's how amazing. much how much E one fifty could I put in one little container? <laughs> I don't yeah. get the whole marketing on that, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, speaking of coloring, here's another one that's got a lot of color. This is the Johnny Walker 18, which do I just they, grabbed. Do they add to that one? Oh, for, for sure. Yeah, oh, I'll show you what the color is. Yeah, this one's, in, I mean, it's it's a good pour. It's only is, 40%, which again is just like, why? But it's actually it called, a pretty good pour. Is it called just Johnny Walker 18? Is there like a name? Other yeah, name? so it's, it's called, yeah, it's just straight up Johnny Walker 18. So it used, huh. or it's called the Ultimate 18. So it used to be Johnny Walker Gold 18. Ah. Then they switched it over to Johnny Walker Platinum, which was 18. And now they've got rid of the Platinum and it's just straight up Johnny Walker 18. I bet you it's because of all the flack on the NASs, and they were like, we just want to put our name in the A statement and just keep it at that. I bet that that was like a marketing thing or something. Yeah, that's that could be really possible. But, I mean, it comes in just this, like, I mean, clearly this is a made-for-Christmas present, <laughs> right? Like, huge gift box, all this. But it, it's – I paid, like, 64 bucks for this. I, it's it's good. Like, I think the Johnny price, Walker yeah. Green, which is the 15-year, is pretty good. This 18 year is not that bad, man. Um, it's the spice, uh, is the swing. I think it's called the swing. Is that a lot different than that one? I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, okay. Because I remember they had one called a swing, and I, I could have sworn that was an 18 year, but maybe it was one of those things where they've changed the name over time, or I can't remember. I'm sure someone, one of these guys that knows about the uh, blended. Uh, whiskeys and grains and stuff uh, that's one thing I, I, I do like to get into like compass box and and, and some johnny walkers i actually do enjoy but uh i just don't know a lot about them as far as overall how they you know yeah. how they do what they do and but i've heard yeah, that a, uh, that's a good one though this one in specific they this is how they describe it up to 18 unique scotch whiskeys matured for at least 18 years to create a whiskey that's blah, 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 rich smooth character all this Subtle smokiness. So, in other words, they're saying that it, it, there's about 18 different whiskeys in there. Wow. The okay. Is this, um, who, is, does Diageo do uh, Johnny Walker? Who owns them? Or do you know? Um, I feel like it's – no, it's not Diageo. Um, I can't remember who owns – runs the show there. 18. It might just be John Walker and Sons. I'm not sure, actually. I might have to look a little bit more on here, but – I wonder who so they're, the getting, one, they're getting them from. Because yeah. 18, if you think of 18 different distilleries, unless it's a big boy like Diageo or a Beam Centaur, how in the world are they going to get all access to these? Yeah, so what they – what they so here are the ones that they say are in here. Um, it's but they have it's Cardew, which is like pretty standard in some of Johnny Walker's. Yeah. Glen Elgin. Okay, um, yeah. And then a Highland Malts, including Blair Athol. Okay, that's but there's Diageo. a little bit of a yeah. So then it must be Diageo. You're right. Because there's yeah, a little bit of a on all three of those that you just mentioned. Yeah, and and plus there's a little bit of a smokiness. There's a slight smokiness to this, which is probably Kalila or Talisker. So I'm assuming this is Diageo. Oh yeah, it is. There it is. Yeah, it's really subtle, but it's on here. Isn't it amazing what good whiskey they have access to, if you think about it? I mean, between oh, yeah. Salisbury and <laughs> Kalila and not counting the Cardis and Glendulans, but they do have like Lagavulin and uh, Dalwini. I mean, they have they do have some nice distilleries in the in their brand, I have to say. Yeah, and like, uh, you know, I don't really hate on a lot of their stuff. I mean, I think that the Distillers Edition series they do is pretty good. <laughs> I've not really had... I've had a you know a handful of the distillers editions. Some of them I think are quite good. Others are like, you know, fine. But I think I've had like, the. You didn't like the Talisker one, did you? No, I like the Talisker one. That's the one you did like. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. I, I was going to fight, Talisker. I was gonna yeah, fight you not, over that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge Talisker fan, um, at least the younger stuff. But I uh, I do like their distillers edition quite a bit. I also really like the. Um, um, the Lagavulin 16 distillers with that PX finish. I mean, oh, yeah. that's variation. It's like sometimes it's a little overpowering, but other ones it's really good. I, I think it's a solid whiskey, you know, solid at like 80 bucks. Sometimes you see it for like a hundred. It's like, eh, that might be a bit much. 
and that's my favorite profile. When you get that, that really nice peat with some really nice sherry notes oh, yeah. together, I mean, between the Ugadal and the Distiller's Edition for uh, Lagavulin and the Talisker uh, Distiller's Edition. Lockworm. Oh, Lockworm, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm awesome. totally with you. That's that's probably my favorite kind of profile, too, which, like, you know, some of the Bunahavans um, that have a little bit more peat in them that have that, you know, heavy sherry is so good, too. Yeah, Crook Vona. Oh, you have know you... another one I have. I have one that I haven't. I actually haven't opened it yet. I just got it recently. It's on my. Uh, it's on my bar. Is the the much overlooked Craggenmore Distillers Edition? Oh, <laughs> Did you even yes. know it existed? <laughs> I, that's the only one I bought. I, I was when I was looking for. Oh, really? Yeah, when I was looking for a, a dram, um, and I and I was doing my distillery tour, I saw Craig and Warren. They had, I think, a basic twelve, and they had a distiller's edition. I thought, well, uh, maybe I should, you know, roll the dice and go for the distiller's edition, even though it was twenty bucks more, whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, it's okay. It's a, I think it's a port cast, isn't it? If I remember yep. correctly, yeah. Yeah. It 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 wasn't my favorite cup of tea, but I have had worse port cast before. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, you know, and it's funny that you mentioned it. That's a nice segue into this Tom and Tal because you were talking earlier about like 40% ABV whiskeys that punch above their weight. That that one, Craig and Moore, just the straight Craig and Moore 12, that's a that's a 40%er that if you drank it without knowing, you'd think was higher. I would also say that this Johnny Walker 18, if you didn't didn't know the ABV, I'd think you'd think this is a 43%er. Wow. So there are whiskeys out there that, you know, punch above their weight on the uh, on the 40% ABV range. Not many. I mean, there are also ones that fail miserably. Aberlauer 16 is an example of that, I would say. Yeah, um, but, usually it's I get lucky, but like you mentioned Glenn Elgin and some of the Glenn Ords and the uh, – the off, you know, Tormor, some of the offshoot ones that you don't usually hear much of. Those 40% ones usually are the ones that are let down to me typically, but you get lucky and get yeah. like a blur athol or, or something that's a little bit more of an oomph factor. <laughs> yeah. Is that something that like when you go out to buy new stuff, I mean, are you, you know, if you got two bottles in your hand around the same price, you're excited about them, but the ABVs are 40% versus 43. I mean, do you, do you pay a lot of attention to ABV in your shopping? Um, I try to like equalize it between the ABV. Like you said, if there's a, you know, a statement, I try to get as close to 18 to 21 that I can. That's like my affordability factor. I, I, I usually can try to get to an 18 unless it's a dumb word. <laughs> but, uh, right. That and um, I definitely take it, depending on the mood if it's peated or not peated, of course. But uh, the ABV and the age, I, I I do I think I do try to get them both as as high as I can. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel the same way. And um, yeah, as far as ages go, like unless there's like a, a serious bargain, I usually don't go above that 18 to, you know, sometimes 25. I mean, so for example, I just got an Anak 24, which is, I got it like 200 bucks, which exactly, is, <laughs> but you know, how many, you know, that's like a, that's a deal for the whiskey that old in my opinion, but especially cause I think Anak is just fucking fantastic whiskey. Have um, you opened it yet? I have not, but I have, I, I'm going to basically do a video of the 24, the 18 and the 12 all at once because I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of, like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I got all three of those. And so I'm kind of working through them at the same time and enjoying them a little bit. I'm going to, the, the 24, I literally just got two days ago. So I'm going oh, to, it's my first is, time to sit down. So I'm going to crack that, crack that thing open. I think other than I'm trying to think of the ones I actually own, it might be one of the older ones I do own. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's got to be in the top three, but yeah, that, I, I got that same bottle for the same kind of price range. Hopefully if you guys are out there and haven't tried the, the NOC 24, do yourself a favor and get it. It is, it, you're in for a treat, my friend. You're going to, you're yeah. going to fall in love twice on that bottle. <laughs> I'm it's looking forward good. to that. But that's like a rare exception for me I mean, to get something that old. I mean, it, it's too, really yeah. like it's priced. I mean, I've, I got a couple of Freud 25s, which I got at really reasonable prices. But that's otherwise, man, it's just too expensive. I mean, if you look at the price difference between like the Glen, the Glen going 21 and the Glen going 25, 
Oh like, yeah, it's like 200 bucks. Like I just can't do it. I can't either. Although I, I would love to because the Glen Glen 25 is at 48 percent versus the 21, which is at 43. Which I'm always like, come on. <laughs> exactly. I, crack that up to 46, and I'll buy it. If have you done the Glen Farkless 25? That's affordable and a great dream. If you haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it's right here. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I think you're going to love that so, one too. If if you don't mind well, the sulfur, it, are you a, a fan of sulfur or is that not your friend? I got about that much left, which is to say hardly any. Oh, well. So my, my, here's, here's the thing about this Glenn Park was 25. I got this for 135 bucks, which oh I was my like, God, this is cheap. <laughs> it was like two years ago. And it was the first heavily aged. I mean, it was the first whiskey I had that was like over, I mean, I didn't even have an 18. I was like, holy shit, this is cheap. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to buy this 25-year-old whiskey. I am not. I was not really impressed with it then. I gave it about a year of oxidization, maybe a little less, and then I gassed it. And I'm not impressed with it now. Like oh, My score yeah. on it when I opened it was like, I think I gave it a 3.5. I think if I redo it, I think I might redo a video and revisit it is more in that 2.5 range. I, I just think it's it's... It's not very dynamic. It's not very complex. When you compare it to other twenty-five-year-olds, like it's personally, I oh, think yeah. it's bottom of the barrel. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I won't fault you there. I think th there is a big difference, thankfully, with the complexity. Yeah, it's of the not a bad whiskey, or, it's right? For a twenty-five-year-old, I don't know. It didn't. In hindsight, with having experienced some other really good drams that are understanding what it's like to drink a twenty-five-year-old whiskey, I kind of look back on it now and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, when you're comparing yeah. it to an Enoch 24, that's true. It is not as complex. I, I did like it though. For I remember I, if I'm and this has been a long time since so I've had it, but it, it the funny thing was I also knocked it for like the mouth coat being pretty thin. It didn't have viscosity at mm. all. It was really thin. Um, I did like the sulfur yeah. in and like notes to it. Like if done right to me, I do like enjoy that a lot. And you don't get that with a lot of whiskey. So that was kind of one of those things that I bumped a little bit up on, but. What do you do? You like that kind of thing? Yeah. So I don't recall the sulfur note as much. So the, when I did my review video of this, um, I did it alongside the twelve just to do a comparison. The twelve I got more sulfur out of. This one I didn't get quite as much, but yeah. I mean, that was it was a while back. I, again, I just pulled this out of the out of my uh, whiskey cave, so to speak, and so I'm kind of <laughs> gonna jump back in it a little bit and, and see what it's tasting like. But you know. Eh, I, I I'm eager to kind of see where it lands, um, but I don't recall the sulfur note as much on the 25 as I did on the 12, which I noticed quite a bit, even more than the Dalmar 12. But I still think it was a better whiskey than the Dalmar 12. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point, though. I haven't done it in so long that I, I'd love to go back and take a, a drink of it. It's it's hard to pull the trigger on a two hundred dollar bottle when even if it is 25 years. But speaking of yeah, man, and like I, I'm I just got this. Mm. As part of that shipment, cracked it last night. That's going to be. I haven't glorious. had this in two years, and it's this one. It, I was like, "What's Corey Brocken going to taste like to me after two years of drinking scotch before I've uh, since the last time I've had it?" And I'll tell you, it is still like uh, a swarm of drunk hornets attack your mouth when you get that in your mouth. It, I was just like, "Holy <laughs> shit, that's right, Corey Brocken." That's what Corey Brocken is. That's awesome that you spit. They all have Here's the thing. dogs and are just tearing you apart because that is a intense whiskey. Holy I'll, shit. I'll tell you what, also, in, in, in you being kind of iffy on the Talisker, uh, the only reason I'd tell you to, if you're not a Talisker fan, I would tell you to hesitate on the Quarry of Reckon to a point because it's, it's extremely peppery. There's white pepper, the pepper now. There's yep. black pepper. There's I mean, if they could find a way to put green pepper in there, they probably would. <laughs> it's on the pepper. <laughs> that thing. It's crazy. It's a peppery storm of hornets. You're exactly right. Man, dude, it, it really is. If I'm going to move for like a powerful one with a lot of spice, but it is pretty good for a pepper bomb is what I would call it. <laughs> dude, the Corey Brecken, uh, again, I mean, uh, we've talked about this before, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the – whatever, if there needs to be a, a deciphering line. I'm in the Oogadal camp, but I do appreciate the Corey Brecken. And again, that peppery note, this is what's weird. What I don't like about it in Talisker is I actually kind of enjoy it more in the in the Corey Brecken. And I think the reason is is because in the in the um 
And the Talisker 10, for example, the finish to me is like pepper dominant versus this. It's more in the mouth development part. And the finish is more of this kind of creamy vanilla seaweed smoked meat thing. So like I'm not left with kind of the pepper note. I get more of the um, other things. Whereas in the Talisker, yeah. I think this is what's always throwing me off about Talisker 10 is like I'm just left with this like kind of just sharp pepper thing that it's just never quite done it for me and i've you know again it's not a bad whiskey but the peppery finish I understand not why good love but it, the but peppery yeah. front end not bad i got you and i felt the same way about the, the talisker storm i i bought the talisker dark storm um which i liked a little bit more because it was more of that kind of bourbon bourbon finish but um yeah uh i will tell you though talisker distillers edition is a fucking winner and the 18, which I'm actually have a bottle open and have been sipping on periodically. Um, that one's, I'm starting to, I'm starting to warm up to that one. So enjoying it. Yeah. The, um, I don't think you're going to get as much of that peppery finish like you would on the 10 or the storm or some of the younger Taliskers. Th right. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe you're not a fan of the, the young Talisker blend, but maybe when you get to the more mature aged combination of both, maybe you'll jump into the Talisker fanboy base here <laughs> you, oh yeah I man know. i know it we've 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 had these discussions i i recall um you uh i think you might have been the one way back when it might have been one of your reviews on distiller.com that actually made me splurge on the talisker distillers edition and the, actually the reason that i got the talisker distillers edition is somebody bought me a bottle of it as a uh. gift and i was like ooh, <laughs> thanks and then i was like holy shit this is fantastic yeah um i have two bottles of it oh wow you and, must have really liked it <laughs> um, i really do i think it's great i think it, it might be i have not had the entire diageo distillers edition range i think the only ones i haven't had is the Oban and the glen kinchy uh, but or and i haven't had the dalwini but as of for the rest of them the lagavulin and the talisker are just Primo. Both Primo. That's that's very true. That's one thing I haven't tried yet. Yeah, I had the Delawinny 15, but not the Distillers Edition. Definitely want to give it a try. Uh, Glen Kinchy, I had the 12, but not the Distillers Edition either. I got to give that a try. Um, and then if you're in the mood for florals and more of the, the lighter uh, Highland type whiskey stuff. Yeah. I just have you had it. this, by the way, have you had this Johnny Walker 18? I have not. I've had the uh, black, the double black. The red, of course, uh, but I'm not very well versed with the the series. Uh, if, if if someone Ooh. offered me one, I would be all over it. Though, as far as trying it, I'm sure it's pretty good. This one, I mean, the one that you should, if you're going to own a Johnny Walker, I think, and maybe the folks in the chat will disagree with me on this, but I, I have a feeling they won't. If there's one bottle of Johnny Walker, you probably should buy as a standard bar, a standard one on your bar is the Johnny Walker Green. It's about fifty bucks, fifteen years, forty three percent. Sherry cast finish. It's got Kalila and Talisker peat in it. It's it's actually a really good blend. But this 18, dude, this is nothing to sniff at. I I think this is better than the blue for sure. Nice. Um, Especially for the price. I'm not sure, sure I would buy yeah, I'm not sure I oh yeah, most assuredly. I'm not sure I would buy it over the green just because I think the green is just such a great value, but if you find this at a good price, and maybe I'll bottle one of these up and send you a sample. This is oh wow, this is a solid pour. I'm really enjoying it. It's that, very much like appreciate it, man. I'll have to return the favor. I'll, I'll uh, see what I can do. I don't have uh, a lot of. Uh, I'm, I am waiting on a couple bottles to be delivered here tomorrow. Thank goodness, but <laughs> it's going to be a a Bunahaven uh, It's It's a, a typically a travel retail thing, but I found a way to get it. And then there's going to be the Clila uh, 18. So I'll try to I'll I'll try to get you like a Kalila 18 if you're interested maybe in that or a uh, little Bunahaven and Kladak if if you're into that too. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, yeah let's definitely do that once this whole COVID 19 thing is you know quote unquote behind us insofar as that's ever going to happen we can uh, I'll definitely be down with to walking into a West Philadelphia post office but until then I'm like, yeah no no I hear you yeah. no I hear you definitely uh. Well, uh, we could actually do a, hopefully if I'm not sure how long this is going to last, because it's probably going to last a lot longer than a lot of people think, unfortunately, 
um, because of the oh, whole for sure. resurgence in September and the whole lack of vaccination. So unfortunately, yeah. I think we're talking like I remember originally thinking eighteen months. As soon as it happened, I was like, "Yeah, that's that's <laughs> probably the fair thing to think." I, you know, but after this is over, I will definitely try to maybe even have an eyeball. We call it an eyeball cue. So, uh, if you're a radio operator, it's it's a, when you do a, a face-to-face uh, trade-off. <laughs> yeah, we should do that. I mean, shit, we were in D.C. for so long, we couldn't make it happen. But we should definitely make it. I mean, I'm just up the road from you. Yeah. Yeah, Philly's not too bad. I've went up to a world. There's a place called World Frets up there that sells indigenous instruments for like, I like to play like Charango and uh, some of the oh, South cool. American stuff. And they have actually, you can order f- directly from Bolivia, like some really rustic trangos and some like uh, uh, the contings from Senegal, like some like ancestors to the banjo and stuff like that. It's pretty cool if you're into music at all. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll make it happen. Go moving on to this Glen Alley 15. Yeah, I pulled up. Uh, I'm still, I'm not going to give any notes just yet because I'm saving this for the next, uh, maybe the next show, but I'm kind of messing with this uh, this uh, Singleton Glen Duel and uh, Select that they did for, uh, Diageo did for that Game of Thrones series. But it's it's the one, it's the least price. I think it's like 30 to 35 bucks. And uh, just sneak preview. It's actually, for the price, it's actually pretty good. I was actually not a, not thrown off when I offered it to a friend that doesn't even drink scotch. It was his favorite one. And I, he, he even tasted some supernova, like stellar 2009 stuff. And he still gravitated towards this one of all things, probably because of low ABV is my guess, but we'll get into that later. (laughs) Sorry, but I haven't even been looking at comments. Hopefully I haven't missed like a ton of them. Oh yeah, man. Everybody's talking shit. Uh Oh, (laughs) Well, now that now that Swami's in the house, maybe we'll get we'll get a little bit of that. But uh oh, I didn't know he. Uh, oh, there he is, yeah, hey, Swami. Swami good to Swami see you, man. Good to see you, man. Hopefully, you're doing well there in Montreal. I'm not sure what the uh, craziness is like up there. If it's like down I'm here, I'm gonna send him the link if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Might as well see if he wants to join us. Might as well cause a little havoc. Mm-hmm. I might have to get. I'll try to keep it to this like long. I like I like this uh, this. Um, view that you uh, showed me i appreciate that yeah yeah that, that one's a lot better the the rails are about to come off <laughs> the the train is about to derail hardcore yeah him and i have been trying to connect on doing a like uh, spontaneous live for a while now but he he seems to always catch me when i'm not home uh, and uh and then he wasn't around the other night when i did my i did a lefroy like a fucking four hour LeFroy live stream with Mike from Mike's whiskey reviews over the oh, weekend. Wow. And, I, I, missed uh, that. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you giving me the heads up on it. I didn't see the, uh, your link until like late that night, like around yeah, like, you know two in the morning. <laughs> yeah. We were just rolling. And then I, I had, like a quarter of the way through, I'm like, Oh shit, dude, Jason would probably be down to talk LeFroy. I got to send him this link, but I figured, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was a late night on Saturday, but it was a lot of oh, fun. That's cool. What, what did you guys go through in Lefroy? Yeah, so we we did a review of um, we did the Lefroy twenty five. He oh, had wow. uh, the two thousand eighteen, which is a all bourbon. Mine's the two thousand seventeen. We did the Lefroy twenty five. We did Lefroy eighteen. He did green tube. I did white. We did the Lefroy fifteen, and then he did uh, the cast strength batch eleven from last year. I did the. Uh, I did a, I cracked a bottle of Lore, and then I did the Karchis 2019, and you know we just kind of rolled wow. through them. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, check it out if you haven't seen it. It's, I definitely uh, will. It's a long it's... one, but definitely was a good time. <laughs> no, it's funny. I like to, I like to hear the differences between the green bottles and the white bottles because the 18 had a older green. I've got the newer white one, um, and the 15 old version yeah. versus the newer one, and all that. It's, it's, it's intriguing because. That they're like they're just like batches off their cast strength. You never know what you're gonna get, even with the age yeah. being the same. Yeah, I have the green tube and the white tube. I was lucky enough to get a couple green tubes. I don't. I'm gonna open one of them and just do it side by side. But I, I have a feeling there's like most of these things when they change the label, there's not that much difference. I did a I did a comparison of the Highland Park 12s about that, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a way for them to like signal that they're reducing the quality or something but 
I think there's a couple folks who have noticed differences between a few, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's up. It's much debate. If you go into whiskey Reddit, you know, you can spend your whole night reading about this shit and being convinced of things. So. <laughs> yeah, with me, it's like uh, it's a, it's a tough one. I haven't seen Swami come by yet. Uh, hopefully he. Uh, yeah, I tossed him the link. I mean, he might. He may or may not uh, join. He's. Uh, I uh, sent it to him in uh, Messenger. Oh, okay, cool. Um, the um, yeah, with Lafroy, it's 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 a tough one. But uh, thankfully, even if they change like from white to green, like you said, it's it's really. It's, it reminds me of when I had the Augur Big Ugadol. I had a, an opportunity to try the 2008 version and also the 2018 version, 10 years difference. And there was maybe a strength difference as far as maybe the flavor was a little more potent back in t t the 2008, just because it sat maybe in the bottle for longer. I don't know how, how that would, would, you know, really be a big yeah. difference as far as maybe when they had it in the casts were just a little more, a little more flavorful, but not a huge, huge difference to justify paying, you know, $400 for a bottle versus a hundred dollars for a bottle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've heard this about both Ardbeg Ugadal and the Corey Frecken that there were, uh, you know, as the years have went by, it's gotten younger and younger, but I've just, I've never had anything pre 2016. So I just don't know. Um, I mean, that, that, that's, that makes sense to me. I mean, it's art bag. <laughs> I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised, but I still think they're both fantastic whiskeys. What's but the like, story that you like we haven't tried yet that you're really eager to get sink your teeth into? Is there anyone that you're kind of like, hmm, this is one I, I haven't done yet, but I'd really like to go. Sorry oh, to put you on man, the spot. That's good, <laughs> no, that's a great question. So the one that comes to mind immediately is Akintoshin. Ah. I have not, and, and I've, look, I've had no Lowland whiskeys. I've had the Akintoshin American Oak once, and I thought it was not very good. But Akintoshin is a, is a distillery that I just don't know much about. I've never had any Glen Kinchy. Um, those two are mildly intriguing. I would like to also get into some of the older Aberfeldies. I've had the 12, which I actually thought was okay. Um, Hold on. Before you, you go know, crazy, let's let's talk about the Lowlands real fast because I want to kind of take a quick tour with you. On the yeah. Lowland, if, 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 if anyone asks me, what's if you were going to introduce someone to a Lowland whiskey, what's the first one you would go to? It's the Blad uh, the Bladnock Adela 15. It is about 120. Mm -hmm. It is pricey per se, but for what you get, it's it's the best Lowland whiskey I've ever had. And I've had a I've had three or four Alcantoshans, which and they're good, but the quality and the price and what you get and, and the whole package, Bladnock Adela 15, I would go for right off the bat or at least try oh, Bladnock. Yeah. Akintoshin, the Three Woods good if you like sweet whiskey, but the um, I've heard that, and I never tried the 18 or 21. I've heard that you might want to go for like the higher aged ones, but don't quote me, quote me, but that's just what I hear. Yeah. You know, I'm, hopefully DHS and some of these guys will kind of chime in on the side and say, yeah, if you're going to do Akintoshin, do this one. I'm kind of interested to see what they say. Go ahead, man. Sorry. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. The other two that I've had nothing from that I'm still interested in trying is um, Jura. I've never had anything from Jura. And, oh, shit, what was the other one now? Um, I just forgot it. Remember you said Glen Kinch? <laughs> you said Glen Kinchy and you yeah, said... Yeah, I've never had a Glen Kinchy. I've never had really much Akintosh. Um, there was another the, one you said, too. What was yeah, it? Jura. Jura is one that I just... I don't know anything about Jura. With and them, so I, I would definitely to. go for an older bottle if you can find it. And it might not be easy because I got lucky that I have somebody that found me a bottle of the uh, Jura's Own 16. That's the old, old uh, line. It's not the new one. Um, if you do have to get a new one, I would get the 18. But the uh, the old 16, I've heard, is better than their new 18, if it makes any sense. <laughs> Yeah, so I know that they've done some rebrand stuff. They had a or like re reassembling of their lineup or something. I think you know they had a bunch of these like kind of mystical labeled whiskeys back like NASs that seem to be uh, sort of disappearing. But the other one that I was thinking of, um, 
is uh, Tomatin. Tomatin, I I've seen. So first of all, they look reasonably priced. I've seen Tomatin. Oh yeah, like seventy five bucks, and they also seem to have a lot of really fun finishes on their whiskeys. I've seen some really interesting like Tomatin finished whiskeys, and so like that one, it, that's a that's a distillery that I've. I don't think I've had. I think I've had a little bit of Tomatin twelve. But I've had really had nothing else, and so um, you know that's heard, one that I might dabble into a little bit. Um, eventually. I've heard the Kubokin is really good. Have you tried the Kubokin at all? No, I haven't. That's um, the one. That's if I was going to start one, right? with, um, I don't know if it's peated. I, I know Drew Bills from the Scotch for Dummies like adores. Um, I forgot which version, and they have different versions. There's like a gold box and a black box and all that for different years, yeah. I think. But um, I've heard if you're going to start with it for Tomatin, for me personally, mm -hmm. I, if you can find the decades, and they, I had the old version from, I guess this. It came out in 2015 was the one I buy. I got lucky enough to buy it Decades? like a dusty one. Yeah, a dusty one on a shelf. Um, but it's great because it has 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and oats in it. It's got literally every decade juice in it from the 60s uh, going on forward. And uh, it's extremely complex, uh, well-rounded, a good medium mouth coat. I, I think it's a, a really good complex one. I've heard they have a new version of the Decades out, but I haven't yeah, tried Decades it yet. Two. Yeah, that might be worth a, a look if you're looking for something. I'm not sure what the price point on it is. I know it. Yeah, I'm I looking right now. When I got the first one, it was underneath uh, two hundred dollars at least for even with all those age, you know, and it's not an age statement, but at least, you know, you got 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and all its juice in it. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like a pseudo age statement. <laughs> so I'm looking right now at the Tomatins um, and I see the decades and the decades too. They're both, they're both European only, oh. only accessible in Europe. But I might be able to find one. You know, speaking of, this is a really good prompt, man, because um, have you ever had any Craig Alecky? Yes. I've had the uh, 13, um, and it's a good dram. What do you think? I've never had it, but that's another hmm. one that I've, like, I'm starting to really try to find these more kind of, you know, tier two, not not hugely publicly, uh, you know, brand name stuff that looks kind of interesting. So Craig Alecky is one that I saw. I've All I ever see is this 13 which is like super reasonably priced. And then the 23, which is like crazy. Price, exactly. Which I, I can't afford, but, and that's yeah. why I went to the 13 when I had my choice to buy one. Now, to, to, have you ever had the Glen Cadam before the 13? I have the, yeah, I have the 13 and the 15. And did Glenn you like, is, did you like it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you like the Glen Cadam 13, you're going to like the Kregeliki 13. That's the good news. Now, as mm. far as, yeah, it's it's got the same kind of profile almost. It's got like a, it's a good spirit. It's got some white pepper. It's got a lot of like savory meets the florals, but it also has yeah, the fruit. It's, it's well balanced. It's 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 a good. It's definitely a good dram. Uh, I would honestly be tempted to save up for the twenty three. That's how good the thirteen actually was. Um, I would love to try it myself, but like you said, it's the price point that's really tough to get around. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I don't got the income to like spend too much. I hear so, you. Bang for buck is a big thing for me. Actually, I saw something in the chat and I wanted to ask you about this. So we were a little while ago when we were talking about how labels change and whether or not the whiskey changes with the label. Um, DH Silv 2 mentioned that the Bunahaven 18 was like a night and day difference. And I, I that's intriguing to me because I had the Bunahaven 18, which is the new label, which was in one of my top five. It was my number four whiskey last year. And I, it was like probably my favorite 18 year old. I did a, every last year I did a new 18 year old whiskey every first of the month for reviews. And the Bunahaven 18 was probably my favorite of them all, sans the Lafroig 18. But have you had this older one? Because, you know, I DH Still's judgment I trust for the most part. And if, if he's saying it was like night and day, I I am now thinking maybe I need to go hunting for an old Bunahaven 18. But have you had the old label one first to new? And can you tell any difference? That's the only one I have actually is the gold label box of the 18. Oh, we uh, should do a we should do a tasting, man. We should we should swap samples and see if we notice any difference. Well, that sounds like fun. 
It does, but unfortunately, I killed the pile. <laughs> oh, well, what's it doing on your shelf then? <laughs> oh, dude. Like, some of these have juice and some of these do not. <laughs> I'll put it that uh, way. I got you. I got you. Some of these have juice still and some of them don't. And it is, it is a lot do I have color. juice, but unfortunately, the ones that I like, and I do like a lot, man, they don't last for too long. <laughs> And that is one that is it is a likable one. Um, it had truffle notes in it. It it had like the mushroom kind of thing, but it still had the really nice base. We don't have in twelve all the goodness you get out of that. Um, extremely complex and well priced at the time. I think I got it for like one thirty to one forty for the uh, for the eighteen. I'm sure now it's probably one fifty ish. Uh, but I haven't had the uh, the tube version. Um, usually it's not a big difference. I'm wondering if he had something, to, I mean, I hate to say this, but what you eat during a day does affect your taste during the night, even if it's hours after. So maybe he had something mm -hmm. that threw him off or something, but I don't know. Have you had Yeah, a, I mean, he seems pretty adamant about the significant difference. So I'm, I'm curious. I wonder if it's that, if it's that different, but DHS, did you have, uh, did you have it more than once by chance? Did you get, were you lucky enough to try it multiple times? Cause unless I try something twice in, in two different days, I usually don't try to judge it. Cause if I have something to eat that, that just doesn't work well with it, it does affect it a lot. I think at night, but that's just my own mm. thing. I was floored having never had either before. Oh, he must be talking about something else, but I was just trying to see if he would make a statement on that one. But yeah. But yeah, the Akatoshin's a, a interesting one. Yeah, the three wood is good if you like a, a really good um, spicy, sweet drink. It's got like a lot of molasses, root beer, uh, pretty spicy, but really sweet. Uh, the American oak and the 12 are, are more just a straightforward, well balanced, you know bourbon-esque type, type of, you know, experience. Uh, not crazy complex, but a good dram. I mean, I'm, I'm, especially for the price, I'm sure you can get. But I'd love to try their 18 and 21. I think that's where I'll, I'll probably will go next on the uh, Akintoshin. Yeah, that's uh, – I've never had any of them um, other than, I think, a glass one night of the 12. And so it's, it's a total black hole for me. And I remember liking it enough, but I've – heard i know that they color their stuff they're like the bowmore of the mainland in the sense that they just color their stuff to no end or something the like ones, yeah <laughs> Ralph, 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 i remember stuff. watching a ralphie video and he was hating on him a lot it was funny oh ralphie was hating on okintoshin yeah yeah, he was like pissed off about the like. I think it was like I don't know, it was the twelve or something. He was just like, I'm sure they're a coloring, so much coloring. Chill filtering nightmare. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I don't remember seeing no chill filtering or no coloring on their bottles. We'll put it that way. <laughs> and unless you see that, usually it's a tip off. Uh, Are you a Glendronic a, fan? Yeah, I, I love Glendronic. So I um I'm curious. If you so, first of all, I think that this Glenalki 15 is something you're going to have to try. Oh yeah, this is. I think it's sharper. It's got a sharper alcohol note, and it's a bit spicier than the um, 15 Revival. But what it brings in spice, it loses in just that like harmonious balance that you get out of that one. I I just think the 15 Revival is probably a step up above this. But I still think you might like this, and you might in fact actually like it a little bit more. But I don't know. It's maybe a horse apiece. But what I wanted to ask you about specifically on the Glendronic thing was, um, have you had, hey, Jeffrey Lane, have you had the Allardyce before? And if you have, have you had any of these? You know, there's this thing with the ages of the Allardyce because they were mothballed for X amount of time that, you know, if you buy an Allardyce that's got the number on it from 2018, it's actually a 23 year old. From 2019, it's a 24 year old, and then I guess in 2020, it's going to be, be out of that stock, and they'll be back to the regular 18. But have you had it? First of all, do you like the Allardyce? Second, have you had any different bottlings of it and noticed any difference? Uh, just to give you kind of a quick rundown on Glendronic, the I've loved everything I've had, and I've had the eight Highland, the 12, 
the fifth, uh, 15 I have not had yet. I've not had the old mm. or new revival, so I'm going to be a good, uh, uh, hopefully, gauge for that when I get my hands on one. I've had the 18 many times, the 21 many times, and the uh, peated portwood, just the peated cast strength, you know, uh, batches and stuff. Everything's been good. The only one I haven't really liked much was the peated portwood. It, it took 45 minutes to open up for me, and that's a long time. <laughs> But other than that, the 18 is really good just to answer your question. And um, there is a, if you go online, you might have to do a little Google searching, like search PDF, Glendronic years, something like that. And there is a PDF yep. out there that someone's got that's really nice and gives you kind of a spectrum of what year is. This yeah, one. yeah. And um, definitely take a look at that. Um, I honestly don't know exactly what year it was as far as if it was a truly like a 20 something versus a 18 whatnot. But uh, the, the 18 and 21 have always uh, been great. I've never had a bad version. I have never had the 21. Um, mostly because, so I guess the 21 in terms of that, like aging thing is going to peak in like three years. Um, but it'll be like a 26 year old. Nonetheless, I've not had it, but I know that that one is also Oloroso with a PX finish, right? Where it's so similar so. to the revival. Yeah. I think that that's quick, quick that. look just to make sure I don't steer anybody wrong. Cause I think you're right. Um, being a, a dual because once uh, glendronic is really good that's one of the things i think they do really well is the fact that they are able to give you a, an experience that has both px and uh the oloroso sherry involved yeah so i've had the 12 which i think is the best of the 12 year old cherry bombs i think it's better than the glenn farkless i think it's better than the mccallan i think it's oh yeah I think it's just cream of the crop for the 12 year old cherries. And it was actually my first 12 year old cherry too, which was nice because everything else compared to it, I was like, hmm. but I have, I have two bottles of the Allardyce. I've had one that I drank. I loved it. I also, I have one from 2016 and then I have one from two or two from 2019, which would mean those are the ones that are supposed to be 24 years old. Um, so That's that'll be an interesting thing to do a comparison on. That's the big difference between the 18 versus the 21 is the 18 is just flat X Oloroso Sherry and the right. 21 is you were, you were right. The PX and the Sherry, uh, the Oloroso is together. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a huge difference for me liking the 21 a lot, but I do like a PX um, more than Oloroso only because I typically find the Oloroso is a little drier as you probably have noticed. Sure. I'm not a huge dry fan, but um, yeah. I appreciate <laughs> the one thing I love about Oloroso Sherry that you cannot get from PX Sherry is the savory notes. I love the savoriness that you get from Oloroso. You know what I mean? I a hundred percent know what you mean. I totally agree. I think it's like, I think what PX does one thing really well. And then I, but I think Oloroso does like three things really well. And then two things that can be detriments, right? It's a little more dynamic, but with that comes some, you know, adverse effects. It really depends on how well it's done. But yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, and I'm interested in test in tasting the parliament at some point in time, but the only PX one that I've had is the 15 revival. And yeah, I love it. And this Glenallachie too is um, it's, I, I don't know if it's finished in PX or if it's just all PX and Oloroso combined, but this one is very similar to that Glendronic 15 revival. Um, same ABV, both non-chill filtered, both natural color, both same age. Um, I think you would really like this. And it, I think if you ever get your hands on a 15 revival, this would be a good one to kind of uh, measure against it and, and see what your tastes uh, come up with. Cause I think they're both really, really good. I wish they flipped it when it, they did the uh, the Glenelicky 18. I thought, well, that's kind of my usually my sweet spot with years. So I, I gravitated toward the bottle. The problem, though, is it's bourbon cask only. So I missed all my sherry oh. that I would usually get. So I wish sometimes they would flip their – because th there's a lot of distilleries that do this. I'm not sure, if anyone knows the reasoning, I'd love to know in the chat. Why is it that a lot of distilleries – and Glenmora does it um, – there's other ones that do 15 year is their their sweet spot with sherry 
but 18 is their sweet spot with with um, bourbon cask. Deanston's the same damn way. I'm wondering why is it that you hit that 15 level and that's where you do your sherry experimentation, but the 18 level, it seems like you do your bourbon experimentation. I wonder if it, yeah, I wonder if it just has to do with like somehow the the age and how it interacts with the casks they have. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Um, Isn't that a really sad good though? question? Huh? Isn't that sad? Though? Yeah, because right, the, the Deanston 18. The Deanston 18 is all bourbon, right? But the, the Deanston 20 is all sherry. Isn't it weird that the 18 is usually like the bourbon year? And for me, affordability is important. So I'm trying to find, you know, that highest age, but also my favorite cask. And it's hard to get that sometimes when you're looking at 15 versus 18. It's really weird. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm going to do? Before I get into the Corey Bracken, I'm actually just going to put a little bit of this Slend Farquhar's 25 in the glass and see, see what yeah, happens. Yeah, I want to see what you think about this. I'm, I'm, and there's no right or wrong answer to any of this stuff. This is all subjective, as, as we all know. A little Hopefully. bit of that sulfur note. The one thing I'm getting right away is this, like, sweet red grape. That's interesting. Yeah, I think I remember some like raisins or something on on that one. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the raisins are going to be fierce on this. But let's <laughs> see. Let's see how this. This was like Christmas cake. I remember. So this will be. Oh. This will be fun to see what happens. Good to see you, Stephen Connor. I, I did see you earlier. I had a chance to say hello. We've been having a good chat here with uh, Walt Muser. And uh, I, I might, Mike, you have to, if you don't mind, maybe if you have time on Wednesday, on Tuesday nights, you come along anytime, man. It, it's always good yeah. to have you on the show. We can do, make it a regular thing if you have the time. So just keep it in mind if you don't mind. <laughs> it's always easier when you have someone else to bounce, you know, stuff off of. Like, I'm not sure how some of these individual whiskey guys do it when, when they don't have anyone to, like, you know, go back and forth with this. Sure. Yeah. So the first thing I noticed on this, like it's very sweet. It's a little grainy, not grainy and like whiskey, but it's like, it's almost got a little bit of like a grainy texture to it. The, the real, where it really sparks up is the, uh, in the development. And again, it's just kind of dark fruit, red fruit, short, short medium, short to short, medium finish. Ah uh, man, I don't know. That's what's killing you is the finish. It sounds like right. It, it. I mean, the finish on that Glen Alec E15 is twice as long as this. Wow, it's been a while since I've tackled that one. I'll have to go take a, another relook at that at some point. It's very palatable. It's very accessible. It's got a little bit of, you know, it's got a medium body. Again, like the development, you get a little bit of that spice. It's very much like sweet Christmas cake thing. But yeah, it kind of tapers off quick. It's bizarre for a 25 year old. You would think it would hang around a little longer, but I've also had some things to drink. So who knows? I, uh, I just, I don't know. Maybe don't do you know. have any water right next to you? I do. Yeah. Maybe I'll just take put a, a drop in here and take a big, no, no, hold on. Uh, don't not, not add to the dram, but just take, yeah, take you a swig of, uh, mm. of water. And, and I just want to see if it makes any difference to, uh, the power of the, uh, well, the power is going to be tough because what well, you said it was forty three percent, right? Right. Yeah, that's the. I think that's the drawback. Oh, great nose. Yeah, it's got a really just like sweet, bright red fruit nose. And that's the thing. Sometimes I'll find some of these really high end whiskeys. It's like it's it's tough because they'll have a great outstanding nose. It's like four, you know, four point five out of five on the nose itself. But when you get to the palate and the finish, even the finish especially, then it's like a complete downhill like spiral. <laughs> yeah, I'm noticing like there's this drying, kind of drying short finish. Yeah, it just. I don't know. You just would expect more from a 25 year old if you've had a few 25s in your life. Oh, and like if you look in the chat, Dram Dude and oh, and DH Silva both mentioned that they use a lot of old tired casks, which I didn't realize that, but that's not surprising. And that sucks because they're like a family owned. They fire, they they fire their stills the old way. Like you think they. What? You know what you're, you know what they're doing though, right? They're saving all their good stuff for their family cast series that yeah. they charge you like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for. Right. <laughs> I think that's yeah, part this of the is, problem. Look, here's the thing. Like this is a decent whiskey. It's not worth 140 some dollars. It's definitely not worth 170 80 dollars. 
and probably the 25 age statement is deceptive. It's just, look, if this was 60 or 70, 80 bucks, I would be like, hell yeah, buy this. But I just, I don't know. I got to see what I paid I think, for that. I'm just curious of what one I mean, I paid 50 bucks more for this than I did for this Glen Alki 15, which is also a heavily sherried. And like, let me tell you, that Glen Alki 15 blows us out of the water. What did you think the Glen, what, what, what did you say that you paid for the uh, 25 Glen Farkless again? This was like 137, I think. That's all like you that. had to pay? Jeez, man. This was like two years ago. Yeah, it's 170 ago. here. 170. <laughs> You yeah, don't think yeah, so? You don't your, like it? Save Another your money, game. dude. No. Well, that's a hard no. That's a hard no. <laughs> I didn't. I, it's funny because, I mean, usually I would rip it apart from it being such a thin dram. Like, because I usually hate, minus the Glengoin being a good taste factor, I usually hate like a thin dram. But mm-hmm. I guess I, sometimes I, I yearn for that sulfuric note that I can't get outside of like a couple uh, McAllen's, uh, maybe a couple um, Benevises and Glen Turrets, things like that. But it's really hard to find that that aspect that, that Glen Farkless has. And I think that's why sometimes I might bump their score up a little bit comparatively to some others maybe. I don't know. That's a tough one. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I mean – it, uh, it's definitely got a little bit of that, like, I think you've said it, you said it a while ago, and I think it nails it has that matchstick note. Yeah. It's got a bit of that, but I, just, I don't know, man. Just not a fan. No, I hear you. Dude, I mean, when you said 170, I'm immediately like... He's like... If you bought uh, this for 170, <laughs> you, yeah. 170 is, is save your money. I mean, if you want to get that magic note, just grab the, grab the Glenn Farkas 12 for 50 bucks, call it a day. Just have it, in, have it behind your, your stove if you need to get a quick quick pull off of it. But yeah. Help, grab the Holland yeah. Park 12 for God's sakes. <laughs> There you go. You want your matchstick? You pull your ass yeah, you out. Can't go wrong with the Highland Park 12. <laughs> Speaking of, what was? Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pour a little bit of Corey Brecken now. Oh, you lucky bitch. Yeah, this is that sounds good. I'll tell you this. I'm sipping on Glenn Doolin Select, and you're pulling out the Corey Brecken. Man, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Well, what's right about this picture is tomorrow you're not going to have nearly as bad a, a headache as I am. Cheers to that. I I'll tell you this tomorrow, much. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you this much, though. Like, say what you want about Ardbeg. You love it. You don't like their marketing, whatever. The nose, just smelling an Ardbeg bottle, there's nothing that smells like this. It is, un, it is, it is a thing of its own. And, like, when I... It's almost as if like when you fiend for a certain type of food because you want the condiments that are on it. It's like I want our bag so I can just hop the bottle because the bottle smells so good. Every you, time I open it, it, it's amazing. Were you lucky enough oh. to ever get your hands on either the uh, committee release or the limited release of the Kelpie? I have the limited release. Oh, that was that was like. Oh man, I wish I had some committees still left. I would send it to you in a heartbeat. The the, the limited was great too. The, that was like German breakfast in a glass, man. It had spatzel, <laughs> it had bratwurst, it had sauerkraut, it had those black sea casts they used for that were unfreaking believable. <laughs> it's insane how good those were. Oh, I missed that. I'm so glad yeah, they I wish I, so. I wish I would have got that. I'm so glad they redeemed themselves when they went from the drum to the black because the drum was a bit of a letdown. And for me, being a huge fan of of Ardbeg, I was I was disappointed. I'll be honest with you. But the black thankfully redeemed Mickey Heads before he let it out. <laughs> yeah, the black is good. I have a bottle of drum committee release that's like maybe only 20 percent down, and like I just never go to it. I'm just like. Oh, yeah. man. I just don't want it. It's it was a real big letdown. A lot of people felt similar about the grooves. I thought the grooves was okay. But. That was a hell of. I thought it was great compared. I mean, comparatively, if I mean, the the dark cove was like five stars. The um, the grooves was like a four point two five, four point five. The drum was yeah. like a three three point five. I mean, it was, yeah, it was I agree. Smaller. The black was back up to the four point two five, four point five area. It, it, it was 
amazing how they kind of did a dip, but they can't, they redeemed themselves in the end. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. All right, I'm going to go in for this Corey Brecken. This is going to be brutal. Oh, man. No water at all. Neat first, right? <laughs> That's the way to do mm. it, man. Neat first. <laughs> That's 57%, isn't it? 57, I think. God damn. Yeah, 57.1. Isn't man. that awesome? <laughs> That whiskey, dude, holy shit. It doesn't matter how many, like, you know, they often say, you know, you go to Pete last and then, like, it kind of kills your taste buds. Even if you've drank some Pete then that night, when you have Corey Brecken, like, you're still going to get punched in the face. Man, that whiskey is so intense. Wow. In a good, good way, though, right? <laughs> yeah, in a totally good way. But holy cow, man, that thing really just kicks your ass. You got to bring your bitches for that one. <laughs> got to wow, get your big, big boy pants on for that one. Neat, neat is what is, a punch is, in the face, man. That's good though. But you add a couple of drops to it. I think you're going to get even. I think you're going to enjoy it more if you put like just a few drops. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a couple of drops on it right now. But yeah, wow, that that thing was. This is the type of whiskey that lets you know you're alive. Are you a big fan of floral notes in whiskey, or, or do you tend to? Yeah, stay I, I do. Floral? I like it a lot in bourbon. Like, there's some of like Four Roses bourbons in particular that I really enjoy the floral notes, especially like they do this thing where they have uh, ten different barrel proof releases, and um, they that they essentially swap out different yeast yeast strains in it, and some of the yeast strains are much more floral. I really like those in Scotch. Anok. Anok is a very floral whiskey to me. The Anak 12 in particular. I really enjoy the floral notes. Yeah. I, 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 there's a couple others too. I could probably think of the names offhand that I noticed that floral note a bit in. But I think you liked it. Yeah, I like it. I, like it. I think you were, you were talking about Glen Kinchy being an issue that you haven't tried it. I think you're going to like it, the 12 even, because when that was, it's funny, my first review ever. Video wise, was a Glen Kitchy 12. <laughs> so it's it's old as hell. You'll probably laugh when you go back if you watch my review on it, the Glen Kitchy 12 from my first video. It's kind of like old school, but um, hopefully I did it justice. I haven't watched it in ages, but uh, d definitely give it a try and see what you think. I'm just curious. It's definitely not a huge price. I think it's like 55, 60 bucks, something like that, you know? Oh, right on. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at that. Stillers. It might be worth I've the never, stillers too. You never know. And they just do, uh, they're just, uh, they got the 12. Do they have anything else in their core range or is it just the 12 and the, do you know? The 12 and the stillers, I believe, let me see real fast. I can tell you, just give me one second for the, uh, the Glen Kinchy. Glen this is gonna. There's an old tin, uh, believe it or not, that actually rates really well if you can find it. Uh, the old tin year is uh, good. There's a twenty year they have that does not rate as well, so I would stay away from a twenty. There's a twenty four that does extremely well actually. It's a twenty sixteen release if you can find it. That's the the highest rated Glen Kinchy I could find. Is a twenty four year, but. I'm sure it's probably not the cheapest thing in the world either. The 12 year does pretty recent, you know, decent uh, distillers we already talked about. And that's about it. So they have a 10 that's old and they have a, a 20. Let me see if this 20 is new or old. One second. The 20 is actually recent. You can find that, but it doesn't rate very well compared to the, uh, even the, uh, the 12 year. So I would, stick, I would stick with either the 12 or distillers, and I'm trying to see if they have any distillers ratings up here. Um, it rates about this, a little bit higher than the 12, not a huge amount. Um, it's aged predominantly in ex-bourbon and finished in Amontillado sherry casks. And that brings me to Ooh. a good, good question for you. Um, when you're looking at sherry specifically, uh, we all know the PX and we all know the Olorosos. We see that a lot, especially with like Lindronics we were talking about earlier. What do you think? Of, what do you, what is your feeling personally on Fino, Amontillado, any other like sherried whiskeys that you've had? Do you like that or not like it? Yeah, that's a great question. So my experience has been relatively limited with Fino. I've actually drank Fino before. Um, I didn't mind it. 
the the one whiskey that I had that was like explicitly Fino was the um, Lafroy Karchis 2018, and I really liked it. I thought that was a really good one. Um, that was my that was my golf clap, <laughs> but I want to clap. Yeah. It. It's like yes, <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Um, conversely, using Lafroy as kind of the delivery mechanism, I did not really enjoy as much the Lafroy Madeira. Um, that one was, I thought just, that was too dry and too kind of bitter for me. Oh, wow. Um, but I've not, again, small, small sample size. I've not had a lot of Madeiras, but in general, I haven't geared towards the Madeira. Um, you know, what's crazy before you go in the Madeira, usually I don't like a dry finish to whiskey, but the, it's a wine type of cask and that actually, I did enjoy that one. That's of all dry whiskey, like whiskeys, that's the one I actually enjoyed. Sorry, Meg. Go into the yeah. Other. There you go, man. There you go. Right. Um, Have you ever had Amontillado uh, finish before? Yeah, I've had the Lef again Lafroig. Uh, I had the Lafroig 2014 Carcass Amontillado, which I thought was fantastic. Oh sweet. yeah, it was sweet. It had a nice kind of like butter pop popcorn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about to say butterscotch. There was like this kind of butterscotch thing going, but yeah, butter popcorn's even better. Um, yeah, that was good. Oh, that was really good. And that's one of the best carriages yeah, I mean, support what I've ever had. The 2013 and 2014 carriages. Holy shit, those are awesome. Sorry, man. Yep. I haven't had a lot of the Marsalas or the um I haven't had a lot of the Marsala or the uh, what's the other one? Um Sauternes. Okay. My, I'm, I'm, Here we go. I haven't Here had we go. Any of those, but. If you if you want to try a Marsala cask, go for the Bunahaven 13 year. That is an excellent Marsala cast. I've heard that. Well, if you can find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I'm not going uh, to. I yeah, won't yeah. debate that. Yeah, one. totally, totally. For, for Kilholman has a Sauternes cast. That actually, I enjoy. Uh, some people, if you don't like Sauternes cast whisk, you know, matured whiskey, uh, I would start maybe with a Glenlivet and see if you like that first. If you like, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember which one is a Sauternes. Is that the Neck, Neck de War maybe? I think yeah, yeah, that's one. But they took the age statement off of it. It used to be a twelve year. Now it's just uh, NAS. That's one 12. that I've been meaning to buy for a long time. Yeah, go for the twelve if you can find an old twelve for a good price. A Sauternes cask, just to see if you like it, and if you kind of at least like the profile, definitely go all in on the Kilholm and Sauternes cask because I think that's a really, really good one. Yeah, all, I've like one uh, in terms of wine casks. What I've increasingly really liked is the, um, uh, just like the red wine cast or the Bordeaux cast. So that I have a Deanston nine-year-old. It's like a cast strength 2008 Bordeaux cast, which is fantastic. Ooh, well, Kill Holman, it's, it's amazing. Um, I've had this uh, red wine cask. I have a red wine cask, Kill Holman, which I freaking love. Yeah, that's the um, red bottle up there. I love that one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that one's really, really good. It took me a while. When it first opened up, I thought it was kind of thin and kind of muted, but it's really opening up. And I think I'm about ready to do a good review of it soon. But yeah, I really like that one. Um, I know that the 2020 cartridge is supposed to be a red wine cast finish. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, is I it? The, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on. So you've already heard about a, a new carriage. I didn't know anything about it. It's yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, man. This is. Uh, yeah, I think I heard about this like a couple months ago, actually. But okay. Yeah. Apparently, the 2020 carcass is supposed to be. It's like going to be a double finish of port and red wine. Wow. Okay. I'll send you with the info that I have on it, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully when they, what makes me nervous a little bit is when they throw the port with the red wine. If they just went straight red wine, I'd feel a little more optimistic about what they're doing because port always throw, I mean, port with, with Lafroy has always been good. The Brodeer, if you ever see a Brodeer, any batch yeah. is good. First batch. Like travel, is that a travel exclusive? The Brodeer, I believe might be but don't quote me on it that's a that's a, a good question i can't remember it is tough to find if unless you go auction or or secondary market at this point but the port wine 2013 carriages and the brodeer are beautiful port wine whiskeys 
they're they're beautiful. Best port wine whiskeys I've ever had. No joke. Um, I just emailed you the uh, the link about the new carcass, but um, I appreciate uh, it. Uh, Swami Swami's in the waiting room. Oh. Well, shit. <laughs> Sorry about that. He he should have done it earlier. <laughs> hey, Swami, good to see you, man. How you doing? How you doing? Good to see you, man. What's we were up, just buddy? talking about port cast whiskey. Do you have a – give me – Swami, if you don't mind, give me a great port cast matured, you know, whatever whiskey ver versus a horrible one. What is your favorite port cask and your least favorite, if you don't mind? If I don't mean to put you in the spot, but I'm just kind of curious. Uh, well, I haven't had uh, that many port cast whiskeys, but my favorite easily priced and readily available one, is, I'm sure everyone's already stated, is the, the Quinta Rubin. Um, and the ah. 14 or the 12-year-old are both really well done. And uh, I, I've had the chance now to try the 14-year-old, and it's really well done. Um, Do you have a favorite between the old version of Kitsuruban or the new? Well, I haven't. I had to have them side by side, and I haven't had them side by side. So in order for me to really make the comparison, I can just tell you they're both really well done. I've had both of them. And yeah. I've owned, well, I've only owned the 12-year-old. Uh, the I haven't owned the uh, 14, so I can't really give the 14 too much credit yet. I've only got to try it locally at a bar before uh, this whole lockdown shit happened, and uh, <laughs> it was nice. Um uh, for one that I dislike, it's kind of hard for me because I kind of tend to like ported cast whiskeys. I guess the one that um, that uh, I, I have to say that I've tried, I can't fucking remember the name of it, but I even reviewed it on my channel. Um, give me a second. What was it? Definitely check out Malta Montreal if you haven't already. Definitely. I uh, appreciate it. Stay away from my channel. I don't want you. <laughs> I, my channel is by invite only. Uh, <laughs> Right. So, I mean, if you could figure out a way to do that, you'd be the one to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, prefer, I agree with Swami on the Quinta Rubin. I think the Quinta Rubin was, the Quinta Rubin was really solid. I, I did have the chance to have both the 12 and the 14. I don't think, I think I gave them both kind of like 3.5 out of five scores. And like, I thought the 14 was a little better. It was Same a little here. more and what you would expect more rounded you know um but i think they were both really good and honestly for somebody who's not a port wine enthusiast i thought they were both really solid whiskey i'm, I'm, I'm actually good. gonna go grab I'm that dean so i'll be right back i'm different i love the ported wines i don't like so turn casks i'm never a fan of the so turn cast one uh whiskeys hold um, on did, did you not even like the kill home in sauterns cast no i didn't like it at all oh shit dude that's one of, that's I, I i mean i wouldn't put that up with like the red wine or the la gorm but being a Sauterns cast, if you put it up against Glenlivet, it kicked its ass out the water, man. It was like a thousand times better. <laughs> oh, I, I don't like Sauterns cast whiskeys. I, I've literally never had one that I've like really enjoyed. In I hear you. I've had I've had some Sauterns cast rums that I've liked uh, because the the, uh. the Sauterns tends to lighten up a rum nicely, uh, where I find that it, it adds the um, sourness. To a whiskey for some reason better. you just tell me something because honestly I, i'm not a i'm a whiskey guy and uh, i've you know done my vodkas and stuff but uh, I've, I've had some good rums but i didn't know that even the rum people got into like cast mature maturation that's well, interesting it depends on which uh like if you look at uh four square and plantation and uh flora and fauna and a few others they do a lot of cast maturation uh bottling uh, El Dorado does them too. They do some oh. on the side ones. Uh, a few, a few uh, rum uh, distillers. I think a lot of them now actually are starting to get into it. There's a lot that's of my favorite. Well, it, even, it, Appleton, even Appleton is starting to do it too. That's my favorite. Uh, do you have a favorite rum distillery? Mine, mine so far is El Dorado for some reason. I'm not sure what it is. But... Mine, you can look at the bottom. I have about 13 bottles. I like Plantation. Which one? Plantation. Plantation. Okay, I'll I'll take a look at that. Are where are they based out of? Um, I, they're based in Barbados. I'm pretty sure, but oh, uh, cool. But they they have um, their maturations like uh, they have different little uh, spots all over the Caribbean, so they can mature in different spots. Or something. And they have uh, a house in France too, a cognac house that they own. So they do a lot of. I think they own Care for Non. So uh, they do a lot of uh, cognac cask uh, rum with the Care for Non cask. 
That's cool. I didn't even know that Rome did their own maturation techniques like the whiskey guys do. That's pretty cool. Uh oh, Malt just left, it looks like. <laughs> Probably by accident. I'll watch for him on the uh there he is, one second. I still call him Rabbit and Red. Yeah, I have a, the same problem. Now I'm finally getting used to calling them malt. <laughs> uh, there he is. He had a nice long live show on Saturday. I didn't come in, I'm sorry, I was exhausted. I was, he invited me for him and Mike, um, but uh I was really exhausted, so I couldn't show up. I don't know what it is. I'm like, I'm it's staying at home all the time. I'm not sick, but because you get the news every single time, you feel like a little symptom of something because you don't realize it's a changing of the season. So you're never feeling well right now with yeah. like the weather going up and down. So it's freaking the shit out of you. So you're always stressed that you got this crap. Jeez. I'm doing this all the time. I'm always yeah. checking my temperature, like I'm taking my, my like above like, ninety eight point six. <laughs> yeah, man. I've had yeah, this. Like I had my. I've had this like persistent kind of like stuffiness and then I'll get this like scratchy throat and I'm just like, fuck, fuck, dude. I'm like going on the like, CDC website. I'm like, yo, what's going on with this? Uh, I know. And it's just like every time, um, every, at least twice, uh, twice a week. Been, uh, I haven't had that one. I, I've only got the version of Deets and I haven't had a chance to try very much uh, Deets and I've been trying more Glen Alkies and Deets. Have you had the Glen Alkie 15? I've had the Glen Elkie 12, I've had the Glen Elkie 10, and I've had the Glen Elkie 25. Oh, wow. Oh, 25? That's a, nice, that's a nice mix. How was the 25, Swami? That's when I have, I've had the 18, but I have and the 10 PX. I, have, I also have an independent bottle of the 25 right behind me, too. I've had it on your channel. Oh, Look geez. at the color of this. This is a this is a nine year red wine Deanston. Isn't that freaking beautiful? <laughs> that's crazy. If it's natural, that's crazy. Yeah, it's natural. This wow. thing is that. Uh, it's, yeah, international, it's, it's International Beer Day, so I'm drinking beer. I'm not having whiskey tonight. I don't blame it's, you, man. <laughs> it's fifty eight point seven percent. Fifty eight point seven. Yeah. yeah. Deanston. This thing is out of his mind. Yeah. Seven, it's a nine year old. It's all a uh, red wine Bordeaux. How much do you have of that left? <laughs> I have enough to pour samples for you two motherfuckers. Oh, that's beautiful. Go. I might try to split mine and give one to Drew Bills, man. Drew Bills is a huge uh, Deanston fan, so I thought I'd give him a it's, little sip, maybe. A really good pour. That looks beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah, I did a review of it, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And, like, yeah, man, I uh, every time I go back to it, I, I, I like it more and more. For something that's nine years old, this thing is so rounded. There's no, there's no sharp edge. There's no heavy alcohol note, even at neat. It's just, it's amazing. I've got a question, got a question for you both. Any, uh, any sorry, Swami, but yeah. do you have any Barolo cast that you guys like at all? I've the Hazelburn didn't do it for me. Is there any Barolo cast that you guys do like by well, chance? I've only had the. the I've only had one, and it's uh, the Hazelburn Bro, the nine-year-old. That's the only Bro cast I've ever had to try. And uh, did you like that at all? I, did, I wasn't a big fan of that one. It, it's not that I didn't like it. It didn't. It didn't feel like it added anything to it. Yeah, but it tasted like basic uh, bourbon matured whiskey to me. I wasn't. It wasn't like as epic as the Oloroso thirteen or the fourteen-year-old uh, that Hazelburn did. That were just like epic. Those two. So. The only thing I got was like the white grapes and and some of the grape aspects from it, but yeah, it didn't really add a lot to it. Have you had any Barolo cast stuff there, Ball, by chance? I have. Um, I have a uh, Napog Castle Irish whiskey, twelve year oh. Barolo, which is freaking really really good. <laughs> what was it called again? Uh, it's Napog Castle twelve year. It's uh, twelve year Barolo. yeah. You have to send me, that, send me that an email if you don't mind so I don't miss that one because that sounds good. Sorry, Swami, what was you going to say earlier? Well, I was going to say, considering that you're such a big Killholman fan, uh, did you happen to tune in to Anthony Wills doing his live tasting? I, I tuned in when on your channel when you were talking with him, yeah. yes, but as far as like a specific time, I'm not sure. If no, he did a live tasting uh, this week on Facebook by himself from uh, from the Killholman Distillery. Ah, oh, I missed yeah. it. Because everyone was stuck at home, so he went on uh, Facebook and did a tasting of a lineup of Kill Homans. He did your STR cast. He mm. did um, he did uh, the twelve year old Oloroso. He did the ten year old Robin. He did a bunch of uh, this week. nice. Yeah, it's I have not had the. I have a single cast Oloroso, but it's not twelve years old. 
I've seen those. Those are those Impex bottlings or whatever. Yeah. There's like the 12 and the 11, but they're like 150 bucks or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I saw those. Yeah. They have those at Potomac. Uh, it's not bad for, for a 12 year old kill home and to be uh, 150 bucks. That's, that's really good, right? Yeah. Petite. No, it is, but it's still 150 bucks. <laughs> I've got like, a, yeah. a single barrel. Uh, it was a bourbon cast, single barrel from the country Vintner kill home. And uh, that one was about the same price, but I tell you what, it is worth it for single barrel bourbon. Yeah. Straightforward yeah. cask whiskey, man. It's, it's like the best the I've Olor ever had. I have an old, I have a, I have an Oloroso sherry cask, single cask from Kilhome, and I think it's eight or nine years. Ooh. Yeah, I have that one too. It was the mistake. Uh, it was the mistake cask. They call it the hundred percent Isla, but the hundred percent Isla is supposed to be um, done only in uh, bourbon barrels. But by accident, they did one full barrel in Oloroso sherry cask. Ooh. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah, I had a bottle in Chignan, who was on my channel, had a bottle of it too. Uh, wow. we, uh, we finished them off, so they're done. I did the review of it on my channel about. Yeah, like, I'll check that out. I'll check it. that out for sure. I bet that yeah. was awesome. I have to. I've never had that. I love their old. I mean, that's the thing about Kilhoman. As far as any newer distillery, there there was you know there's Ardenho that's coming up. There's Gartbreck that was going to happen, but Gartbreck I think fell apart. Swami, do you know anything about Gartbreck? Is that like a done deal? They're gone, or I have no idea what distillery that is. I, I as I am not a a, a, a complete. Uh, Nerd that follows like every new post and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I've got I've got my stories. I, if I find out about you, I find out you. But I've been lost in the loop a lot. I, just to be honest, I don't really watch whiskey reviewers anymore. Um, I, I check out some of my friends uh, occasionally, and I'll come on to the lives a lot. But to watch reviews, I've kind of tuned out. I don't even watch my own reviews, so I'll just be honest. I I, I haven't put out a review in like a month and a half. It's, oh wow. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm gonna put Nobody's noticed. What is that? What did you got there? <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, Malted. Uh, yeah, so this is one and I'm wondering, I don't know uh, if you've had this, Swami, but this is uh, Kilhoman Mocker Bay Cast Strength. Yeah, the Tour. Yeah, I've got yeah, 2000. This is one. I got two bottles of Luckily. I, I would love to get you guys both samples of this because this yeah, is a freaking treat. Know. Tried the new age statement ball blurs yet? No, I've heard negative things about him though. Because really? I love ball blur. I mean, dude, that I have a couple of their the old vintage expressions, which were really, really good. Yeah, the uh, the twelve year old sells here for seventy bucks, and the fifteen year old sells for yeah. hundred. So I was thinking about purchasing. Oh, That's yeah, I've not heard too it. bad for Canadian. Be careful though, Swami. I've heard iffy things about the twelve and fifteen on the new make. Yeah. So even though if you're, you know, I'm not going to tell you where to put your money, but just be careful. You might, if you can get a sample of it first, you might want to take a sample first, just to let you know. Uh, well, at seven, at seventy bucks, I don't mind risking it for the twelve year old. Maybe the hundred dollar or fifteen year old, they might wait on. But the 12 yeah, for, for seventy bucks, it's not. It's you know, it's not bad. If it's not good, I'll just give it to somebody else or whatever. But I've, I've have heard you had a, have you had a decent amount of their vintages, Swami? I, I've reviewed a lot of them. I've had the 89, um, I've had the uh, 03, the 05, and yeah. the 90, and uh, what was the other one? There, I've reviewed them all on my channel. Uh, I've reviewed about four ball bows in my channel. Hmm. Yeah, I love the vintage statements, but the, uh, the, the new ones I haven't heard that great stories about. Go ahead, man. The 89 was my favorite by far. Yeah, I've had the ninety, the ninety nine, and the oh five. I've had Same the, here. I've had those three too. Yeah, I'm, those yeah. are good. The ninety, the ninety was amazing. Um, but the even, the, five, even the ninety nine, I thought was like spot on for fifteen. Yeah, the ninety nine was really good. Jesus too. Christ, for the price, loves, it was awesome. Everyone loves the ninety because it's Polaro, so that's why everyone loves the ninety. Yeah, but man, no, it's like it's like it was urban and Oloroso, I think. Yeah, but it had really it. most of the time, most ball blares are strictly bourbon cats, so that's why it was such a difference maker on the ninety. Uh, yeah, the eighty nine is twenty three years of age and it's fully bourbon, and I love that one. That one's good. The eight, if you can find it, it's not. It's probably not worth the price nowadays. But the eighty three is insanely good. If you like I've bourbon heard, cask, I've heard, I've heard good. Yeah, I've heard good things about the eighty three. I got lucky. Yeah, I didn't buy it myself. 
I didn't buy it myself, but I tell you what, man, it's unbelievable. If you can get your hands on something like that, it's crazy. User, have you been like me? Have you switched over to VG uh, style? Uh, liquid yeah. I've cough? been VG, yeah. Yeah, I went to VG because I don't want to cough because every time I've spoken the propylene glycol ones, I'm dry hacking. And I started, Dude. I got fucking uh, coronavirus. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> because Dude, you're a fool, man. You're killing me with that. Oh, Dude, yeah, I have. Uh, I'm doing. This is the. Uh, uh, this is the Halo Tribeca, the high VG version. This is 12 monkeys, the strawberry flavor. Which, uh, which, <laughs> what, what, what is the, what's the, uh, the, the milligrams that you use? Uh, six. I do six. Okay, I'm on three right now, but I actually I'm about to switch this out and put on a six. The other one that I have that is a really high VG that I'm going to do right now. This is Space Jam. This is like freaking oh, like, yeah, it's like, it's called Andromeda. This, one is, this, is, this one's uh, Canada Tobacco. It's a fish. Dude, yeah. This stuff, it's like a, it's like a blueberry pie. All right, I got to go get something. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I can't do, like right now, these ones are like 70% PG and they make me dry hack like crazy. They're Havana. They're my favorite, but they make me cough. And every time I'm- Yeah, man. Dude, I can't mess with the PG anymore. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to. I'm trying not to have dry coughs. <laughs> I just think everything, everything that yeah. Every time I feel any itch in my throat, I'm like, shit, is that cozy? You know what? I had a panic attack in my life Sunday night. I had the biggest panic attack. My my hand got all tingly and shit because like I felt like my forehead before it was kind of warm. I was like, oh no. It's become a vaping channel, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out my blue. I've got a sad. I've got a very, very yeah. sad blue. <laughs> You've got the blue. Oh. Oh, I used to smoke um, when I when I did smoke. I smoked um, camel uh, wides and, and Marlboro Reds for like many, 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 many years. Yeah, man, but I know about that. I had to I had to put that away for a while. But yeah, every once in a while, like I don't I don't do it often, but I'll have to pull out the blue, which is really sad. I know for you guys, you guys are like, what the hell is he talking about? Blue is like Dalmore, right? Me, <laughs> yeah. The vape got me off cigarettes for sure. But yeah, yeah, the blue. The blue, the blue is, is like Dalmore, isn't it? But the blue tastes like the blues taste they remind me of like after after eight mint chocolate things, but without the mint part, just like the chocolate. I don't, I don't like the taste of it. It tastes like chocolate and coffee or something. I just get the cherry ones because I don't like straightforward, like crazy stuff. I used to smoke menthols even even after a while, but I, I've been all over the place with it. But yeah, I try to keep it to a minimum. <laughs> Dram dude just posted well a few minutes ago that he said he, he has a spring bank that's four years bourbon, nine years uh, Barolo. You ever oh, had wow. that? I never heard of that before. That's an interesting combination. Four years bourbon, five years. Oh. So that's a nine year. Oh, that's the one I think we're talking about is the nine year Barolo uh, cast statement. I think it's the same I, one. I'm, I'm going to annoy a lot of people and tell them that I, um, I kind of, I still, I still like Hazelburn. I still like Long Grow and I still like Kill Karen, but I've uh, boycotted Springbank. I, I don't buy Springbank anymore. What? Why? What happened? The, the prices are just fucking. Yeah. Well, I, I, won't, I won't go near it anymore. It's just, it, it's, it's so not worth it. Other than the 10 year old and the 15, everything else, even the 12, like I love the cast rank, but even the 12 has jumped up too much. For some reason, the 10 and the 15 are staying re reasonable. Dude. But everything else is fucking stupid in price. Swami, you're totally right. I walked into my local shop over on the in Jersey where I go to get stuff. And um, two months ago, he had the 12 for 98 and the uh, the 10 for 65. I walked in. The 12 is 129.99 now. And it's across the board. Even the places that I buy stuff on the internet, the spring banks have went up like yeah. they went up 20% in cost. Yeah. I'm just like, I can't. It's got to be tariffs, I'm thinking. Is it is it tariffs, you think, Swami? I don't know, because there's no tariffs in Canada. We don't have the tariffs. Oh. And the 12-year-old has jumped up to $150 here for the 12. And the 15, Damn. The 15 is 145 And uh, the 10-year-old is 90 which it used to be 80 The 10 year olds yeah. still good, but I still find it's overpriced for a 10-year-old. Yep, agreed. Uh, it's very for good. 60, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd buy it for 60 but I wouldn't buy it for 90 Yeah. Oh. I have uh, I have three <laughs> bottles of the uh, that I bought at this shop that was selling the Springbank 15 for 94 bucks a bottle. I bought three of them mm. of like the old black labels and like. And then I, I go back in there. I was going to grab another. And he, 
at the price of 35 bucks. The 15 year olds are actually getting better with uh, every year. They, they're I love I, the, the 15 is so freaking good. Yeah, the 15 is nice. It's very fruity. Yeah. What did you guys yeah. think about the green series? Do you like the 14 or the 13 or 12 green series at all? I've had them. I've, I've only had, had one. I had one oh. gram of the 13. I had one drama of the 13 green and I thought it was good. That was, it was incredibly like vegetal grassy. Floral, exactly. Like, yeah. Very different. I liked it, but I, yeah, I never got it's a bottle. It's definitely like a mind fuck. It's, it's really like, you, you're not expecting it at first. I had it on Christmas Eve last couple of years ago. And when I had it, I was like, is this good? And, and after like sitting with it and, and letting it, meld you know it actually turned out to be good but it was kind of a mind fuck at, at first really me because they're noisy because i was the first channel officially other than ralphie that was promoting spring bank a lot and then it was like it just they I, and then every other channel jumped on and it was like a fucking whirlwind and now like they were never they were never reasonably priced they were always expensive so that's what pissed me off they yeah were, but you're paying for they were already, for the, like, they the were quality already, you know they were already at a high a premium price so the fact that they yeah. went up is like now it's just at an unaffordable price is what I'm trying to say. Like it went from being yeah. a premium price to being a, just a stupid price. I've, 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 dude, you're totally right. And yeah. like I've, I've tried to hunt down the, the 18 at a reasonable price. I can't find the 18 well, the cheaper than like sucks. 190 it's bucks. Hard. And I've also heard negative things about it. Yeah. Well, the, the 18 sucks. It, it sucks since it's ever been I, – I've never liked the 18. But uh, there's just so much quality out there now that they that you don't have to settle just because you know everyone tells you Spring Bank's awesome. Like Billy Walker's fucking Glen Alkies are fucking fantastic, and they're to me just as, as well done in quality compared to Spring Bank, if not sometimes better. Like if you had the Glen Alky twelve year old, it is seriously one of the best twelve year olds I've ever had in my fucking life. It is just beautifully done. Um, How do you feel about the Anok 12? The Anok, I love. I, I, I love the Anok 18. I'm a huge Anok 18 fanboy, and I really like the Anok Razcan, and I really like a, a lot of their PETA casts. The 12 year old is good, but the fact that it's 40 percent is the one knock on it. Uh, no pun intended. Oh wow, you guys get the 40 percent. It's 43 percent here. Yeah, it's 40 percent here. Um, it's still great because oh. the whole mineral quality to it, and it's got that yeah. stone taste that really shines that you don't really find in a whiskey i've never tasted a whiskey that's got like a limestone kind of taste to it and that one tastes like literally like yeah. you're whipping granite a bit when you drink that yep. year old. totally yeah speaking of spring bank yeah here the the 10 it used to be 75 now it's 90 dollars for some reason that's yeah, 90 or 11 is 150 the 12 cast strength is 125 it used to be 100 and 110 the 15 is 150 and the uh, 15 single rum Rum cast 180. Well, the, so, 12, yeah. the 12 to last year was always the same price as the Lagable in 16. They were both sold at 116. Um, wow. Because I always would go in, what am I going to get today? I'm going to get my, because I, I, I was a guy that just always bought my 12 year old. I always bought the Spring Bank 12 every time. Yeah, me back. too. The last time I bought the 12 year old was in 2016 and I bought three bottles. So they lasted me till now. Like I literally just finished my last bottle of my 12 year old about three weeks ago uh, where I did a bottle kill on it. Um, and I'm not going to buy any more of them. Like, uh, nope. I'm Me not, either. It, you know, it's like, it's I like, can't do it for like, it's like a like moon 12, which is 160. I'm not going to exactly dollars on a like moon 12. I'll buy the eight year old, which I know is, you know, 48%, but still it's 48%. It's a really good price. It's a hundred dollars. I'll get the, I'll get the eight year old from like and or the 16, which is, you know, not the best, but still good in a pinch for it. So. Yeah, 110 to 120 would be my cutoff on the Springbank uh, 12 cast strength, yeah. I think, at that point. Yeah. Be my cutoff. I'm uh, glad I bought a bunch of them a couple of years ago because yeah. they're just too pricey now. I have a couple sitting downstairs that I'm going to open eventually. I love the, the the 12 cast strength Springbank is one of the best whiskeys they, they I've give, ever had. They give, they give McAllen's a run for their money in the in the way overpriced uh, fucking market. It's... Uh, one of the reasons why McAllen's is no longer really sought after and people don't really purchase McAllen's as much anymore other than the classic cut and the additions that come out of them. So no one's buying McAllen's like you never can buy them. Yeah. 
I know you're not a fan. Uh, I know you're not a fan, Swami. But I hope Glen Scotia doesn't go down that road of of, of inflation and prices. Because the, even though if you're not a ba- big fan of the 15, it's very well priced now. But if they raise it above 75 dollars, yeah, but, right but they're not Jane and Mitchell. Glen Scotia is their own distillery, so it's not. Uh, they have nothing to do with uh, Jane and Mitchell. It's not like Kilcarran. Uh, right. Could and I don't. I don't know if Kilcarran has raised their prices yet. They they still the twelve year old I still see it at eighty bucks, which is a very good price. I buy it all the time. I've got a bottle in there. I love my twelve from Kilcarran. Uh, that fifteen new one was like around one ninety. It was on the higher side, but for the fifteen year old, for what it is, it's actually a single cast. It's really really good. I have to say, I'm not sure if it's worth that kind of price, but it's really damn good. Sorry, man. Go ahead. One, if you're, if you guys are into one that I tried this week at a friend's house, I'm ordering a bottle of it that I actually really liked, and it got a lot of bad reviews from reviewers. But I like I uh, the Spaniard. Oh uh, yeah, I tried oh, Spaniard from Compass Box, fifty dollars. It, it's fucking not. It, it's not something that's gonna fucking blow your mind. But for fifty bucks, and it, it totally reminds me of an Aberlour 18. It's got the same exact profile of uh, Aberlour 18 year old. And it's sixty bucks. And that's a good point. Yeah, it's it's fucking epic. I like it. Have you guys messed around with any of the? I mean, speaking of like, so I got, I don't know, but I got annoyed. I saw a bunch of reviews from uh, channels. They're all like, oh, it's not that good. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Fuck, it's a good whiskey. How do you feel about the Campbelltown? Or um, in, in thinking about Campbelltown, how do you feel about the Glen Scotias? Have you messed around with any of the Glen Scotias? I've only I've only had the fifteen and the the Bintner. Uh, the what, what's it called? It's Victoria. Like Victoriana. Victoriana. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've only had two of them. Um, the 15, I was, I, I did a review and Telex was talking about, it. he saw the review and didn't, so I wasn't, uh, in love with it. Um, I didn't hate it. Hold on one second. <coughs> okay. I'm dying. Um, uh, <laughs> um, but seriously, um, the, I, I wasn't like, I'm not in love with the cleanse coach. I'm not going to tell like people that I hated it. It's just. Let me it. ask you. I, let me ask you a question. I think, if I don't think, mind people, I think everything Campbelltown gets a lot of fucking hype and a lot of push because people are. And I love the Glen Scotia. Let me, let me ask you a question, Swami. I think I think this is the reason why you don't like it. Are you a fan, Swami, of the cola kind of aspects to whiskey? Like the 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 old school um, Lafroig Fifteen has a lot of cola to it. The Glen Scotia Fifteen had a lot of cola. Do you like the cola aspect? I didn't it? hate it. I just. Thought it was overhyped. It wasn't yeah. like all. Like it just feels like in this community, and I say this very politely, that uh, when reviewer one reviewer loves something, then everybody kind of coalesces around and just like treats it like it should be put on a pedestal. Uh, I didn't find that it was anything that special. It's just my honest opinion. When I drank it, I know like you can look at my reviews. When my eyebrows raise up in a review, you know I like something. Like and I just didn't have that that special feeling when I drank it. It just didn't do anything for me. I didn't get I didn't get a semi chub when I drank it. I wasn't like, you know I did on the Glen, oh, I did on the Glen Scotia fifteen. Hold on. Okay, Swami, do do you um do you like cola <laughs> yeah, aspects in a dram? Do you like if you get if you drink a dram and you get like a lot yeah. of cola aspects, do you like that aspect to it? Or hold on, think of the price point. Did the price point have any effect of your of your review of it at all? I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. Oh, I, well, point, I got it, I got that bottle off of Mike. Mike, that's crazy. Let me the bottle, so I didn't even pay for it. So. It's extremely well priced. That's why for a 15 year old whiskey, I'm surprised that you wouldn't. I mean, I don't usually take value into account with reviews either. I always, so I know what you mean. You have to, you have to take value into account because not everybody has, not everyone's sitting on a pile of cash. So you have that's to true. Put, yeah. I always put value. Yeah. Into that's kind of the, that's kind of the philosophy that I do. Yeah, well, the right. whole point. I don't well, think there's any right and wrong answer to it, but I, I, I my 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 approach is like I I look at it based on the way I live, and I'm thinking to myself like, was this a bottle that I would spend? I, I try not to. I try to look at it as in a way that everybody lives. I try to find a common ground for everyone that's around. When I do my review, I'm trying to think of everybody. Uh, I'm trying to think of right, right, exactly. People, right. people that are making thirty thousand to people that are making two hundred thousand yep. a year. I, I I'm trying to find. A comprehensive value point, and not only that, I'm trying to 
to always think of what sold at that price uh, line around it and what's exactly behind. not, yeah. not what's above it. I always try to see think of what's underneath it that shares a lot of commonality yep. you can get that will save you money. So yeah, is- man, I hey, amen to that. Like I, I try to take the same approach, and like in a lot of my reviews, I kind of when I go into my final thoughts, I explicitly kind of mention these things about like, look, you know. I love this $85 bottle of Jefferson's Ocean Cast Strength, but let me tell you this, there's three bourbons that you can get that I think are of comparable comparable quality that are 25 bucks cheaper. Like, yo, don't don't spend your money on it. I saw you pick up the Johnny Walker 18-year-old earlier in the show. It was was the 18 from what I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did the the Chivas Regal 18, and um, I was saying that that one sells for 185 where the Chivas sells for 95. And the yeah. only thing really that you're going to miss between the two of them is that you're not going to have that slight tiny hint of peat. So if you're okay with not having the peat, I would go with the Shivas 18 year old over that Johnny Walker 18 any day of the week. That's why I like your reviews, uh, Swami. You're really good about like picking out the nuances between one versus one. Go ahead, mute Malt. Sorry. No, go ahead. That's, uh, that's the only thing I'd say. I agree. Yeah. I uh, The Shivas 18 was. A good to me was one of those drams that I think I was like in that three five range. I was like, come on, man. the cost of this is you're getting, what you're getting is great. You're getting epic, epic space side flavor out of that Chivas eighteen year old. Like, yep. you'll pick up everything that you'll get off of a Glenfiddich eighteen or twenty one year old in that eighteen year old, and they're practically identical on the ABV range. It's just that you'll get a small bit of grainy alcohol taste to it, but still, when you're comparing. Uh, doing a comparison in price range, where that you know Glen Fittick twenty one year old is costing two seventy five, and that Chivas is costing you one under a hundred. Exactly. Grab the Chivas, like you yeah, know. Man. If I'm in a bar in a pinch, and all they've got on the shelf is a couple of shitty uh, bottles, I'm gonna grab that Chivas eighteen every day. What's your favorite? Is, is that your favorite go to blended? Uh, is oh. it Chivas Regal, or do you have a favorite blended Swami? My- I'll go to Mall after you. My favorite blended is. Is a Johnny Walker Green label. I like that. 15. Oh, okay. And Same I was going to ask you, Malt, Malt, you were talking about the 15 um, being your one of your favorites. Have you had a difference between the Island Green versus the regular Green? If you know what I'm talking about there? I do know what you're talking about. I haven't had the Island Green, but the, the Standard Green is my favorite blend. This okay. 18... I paid 10 bucks more than I normally pay for the green for this bottle of 18, which is really the only reason I even pulled the trigger on it. I I think this is right there with it. There's another but again for the for the average for the average in your average scenario out in the world, the 18 is going to be 25, 30 bucks cheaper. I just got a good deal on it. So like for me, not as good as the green. Like There's- I think the green is 50 bucks. 15 year old, 43% sweet spot, great blend. There's one I forgot though. There's one I forgot that, that that stacks right up with that green label. And it's even cheaper. It's like $40 less. The Naked Grouse is a beautiful blend. Yeah. I Naked like Grouse. That. Okay. That's a good one. I've only had the famous and the smoky, but I never had the, the Naked Grouse. Is that a, is it the uh, same company? It's all sherry. It's full of sherry. Uh, it's grain whiskey mature and cherry. It's a uh, single malt whiskey mature and cherry blended together. Like, is it by the same? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, grouse and the famous grouse. Yeah, it's it's Glenfiddich. Uh, it's Grant's. It's Grant's. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's try that one then. It's I good. Still- I mean, like you need those palate starters or those those whiskeys you go to when you're just like, I don't want to drink an 18 year old scotch. It's like those are great pours to just like throw in the glass, start your night off. Shivas 18. Green Label, Johnny Walker, um, Chevek. Great Glasgow Street Compass Box, yeah. uh, or either of the Compass Box Great yeah. King Street series, which are like 35 bucks. Like great whiskeys for the money. I think Naked Grouse, even the Smoky Black to some degree, but it's a little bit more unbalanced. But Chevek, yeah. Chevek is a great one too. If you want something that's got a lot of, but it, it, it's a player profile that maybe Talix would really like, is the Chevek. Uh, you know, tea bag, Chevek. Freaking nineteen dollars a bottle! Wow, it's unchill filtered. It's forty percent. So if you add the slightest tiny bit of cold water to it, it clouds up to fucking cum. It looks. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget yeah. Highland Park Twelve. Have either of you had the uh, Compass Box uh, Spice Tree 
Have you read yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. I, reviewed it. I reviewed the Spice Three. Is it, is it, are, are they, I mean, just give me a general. Is it pretty good? It's good. Spice is great. My favorite one. But again, another one that's jumped up in price like it's ridiculous. It was my favorite at $120. I used to love the Flaming Hearts. Oh, it was, yeah. It costs for close to $200 a bottle now. That's crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Flaming, Flaming Heart has been priced out, but the company, but the Spice Tree hasn't. You can get a bottle of Spice Tree for 60, 55, yeah. 60 bucks. It's a great dessert dram, a lot of spice notes, but like they're well rounded in this nice kind of vanilla. Dude, it's. The spice tree is fantastic. I think it's the best in their core range. You can also have, get- he, have any of you, have, he, have, have any other of you had the phenomenology at all? I've only had the no name. I still have a little bit left, actually. The no name, Bart. Uh, sorry, Barton Scott sent me a sample of the name up there, which um, I, I found it to be just Ardbeg. Like I, literally, yeah, I, I drank it. I, I didn't hate it, but I was like, it's Ardbeg. I tell you what, if you ever have a chance, it is 180. 180 is on the higher end, which is, I know it really sucks. But if you have 180 and you can find the phenomenology, you'll be very impressed. I have a feeling. Just keep it on your radar if you if you have 180. I went online to order uh, from Alberta, and because of the the COVID in Quebec, the liquor stores are still open, and in Ontario, the liquor stores are still open. But because Alberta, the liquor stores are private; they're not public. Like you have also Telex, so you're lucky. I think everyone who's got public liquor stores right now are really happy because they're also open because they're government run. So oh shit, yours are all closed, aren't they? No, mine are open. They're all oh. fun. All the private stores are closed. They're oh. all they don't want to work right now because they're like, fuck it, we don't want to die. So they're all closed and shut. Yeah. But the 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 public ones are government run, so they have to stay open. They're not allowed to close because they're considered essential services. Because, and it's true, it is an essential service because you have, you don't want riots in the streets and you don't want people overflowing into the grocery stores uh, to, you know, buy their liquor and shit like that. So you have to keep the liquor stores open in order for to be less um, crowded in the grocery store aisle, you know. Um, But the stores in Alberta, they're private run. So they're all closed. Um. I don't order, I, I don't buy Compass Box products in Quebec. I buy my Compass Box products from Alberta because Alberta. They're, they're better priced in Alberta, so I, I tend to order my compass box. Isn't that crazy that Alberta of all provinces is like the best place to order whiskey from? Why can't the Prince Edward Islands or New Newfoundland or the Nunavik territories, why can't they do no, what Alberta does? What you're talking about because if you talk about Ontario and Quebec, Ontario and Quebec have a lot more stock. We 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 run the market. All right, because we have uh, a, a big say in what we can get. Um, the, mm-hmm. the, the difference is Alberta's really good when it comes to private selection, meaning uh, old, old particular uh, the independent all, bottlings, all, all the independent bottlings, uh, uh, the fucking Scotch Malt Society bullshit, whatever. I don't buy those bottles. I know you do, tell us, but I don't buy that shit. Um, <laughs> Hold on, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to tra- taste a few of them just at tastings, and like yeah. I, thought the, I thought the range varied, but the prices were were a little bit too much. I'll, 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 I'll go, okay, I actually got to Hey, gentlemen, I got to drop for a few minutes because I got to do a phone call, but uh, I'll uh, hop back on in like 15, 20 minutes if you guys are still. Right. No problem, man. Appreciate Sweet. it. Sweet. Cheers. All right. I'll take I'll take um, first editions, and I'll take all particulars over. I'll take over. The Scotch Malt Society, they're always better priced than the Scotch Malt Society shit. So. What kills me with those guys, I mean, the quality is is there. The shipping prices, they, they stack on top of it, and the the price overall is really tough to deal with. And the because yeah, I mean, you can go to your local your local place and pick up a old particular or a Gordon Gordon McPhail or you know whatever. You or yeah. It's so weird. I think Cadenhead produces a lot of high end quality fucking shit and they're just better priced. I, I get it. There's an allure to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society because you think of a bunch of old fucks sitting around with tweed jackets smoking pipes. But think, but it's Cadenheads for God's yeah. sake. I mean, Cadenheads is like when you talk to a Scott, a true Scott, and you yeah. talk about independent bottlings, the first fucking name they're going to tell you is Cadenheads. Yeah. Would you agree? <laughs> I, well, Cadenhead is never like they make the best independent bottled rums 
I've ever tried is always from Caden. They, they do some really good independent bottled runs. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm always sold on Caden. Old Particular is hit and miss because Old Particular tends to just go, you know, uh, bourbon barrel mature all the time. They don't really go out of that box. Occasionally they'll do like a pork casking, but I, I rarely see like a sherry wood. Uh, same thing with first editions. First editions are great, but I wish they, the one thing I like about first editions are always bald at cast strength. Uh, the, the what the other thing I don't like about them is they're always just doing first filled bourbon mature. I, I would like, yeah, to, to, give me a cast matured in some different form, right? Yeah, uh, ABH says if I could only get a sherry finished, uh, okay, no, that again, see, they always doing bourbon mature. That, that's the problem with a lot of these guys, and that's why maybe a lot of them go to the SMWS is because they will do a lot of sherry mature. And they will do a lot of uh, different variations compared to the rest of the guys out there. Is Caden Heads your favorite independent bottler, or do you have a favorite independent bottler that you're like thinking, well, I like this distillery, and if I find this independent bottler, that's what I'm going to go with? What, who's your like favorite? I think Montgomery's and First Editions are probably my favorite price wise because they're always really uh, low price, and they always get the smaller distilleries that I like, like Ben Nibis and Edredor. And uh, a few Much others. Far, yeah, yeah. They're talking now. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, whereas whereas um, old particular tends to go more towards well, lo well, you love them, Lefroy, uh, yeah, Talisker, and things like that. Yeah. And Talisker, so uh, it depends on what you're looking for. I, I like first edition because they're doing a lot of Glen Ellicky and uh, Glen Kinsey oh. and a lot of uh, different uh, Anarch. They're doing some Anarchs and stuff like that. So they're getting a lot of different. Uh, I, even watching my channel, I've been doing it for five years. I've never done a Glenn Fittick review on my channel. I've recently done like three Glenn Livets in the in the past, uh, but it's like finally this year. So I, I like watching. I, I like tasting bottles, bottlings from smaller distilleries, or not doesn't have to be smaller distilleries, but less popular distilleries tend to be where I'm trying to go for. Um, you know. It's just it's it's what I like. It's what I buy. Um, Have you ever done a Tumman Tool before? A Tumman Tool. That that's what I did tonight was the yeah. Tumman Tool sixteen. Have you ever had anything from these guys at all? No, I, I haven't had Tumman Tool. I've had a lot of Tumatin, but I've never had Tumman Tool. These guys are in the same realm as the Tumatin. They're kind of in the same area in space side, I think. And uh, it's good. It's it's funny because. The 16 is, is actually a pretty good mouthfeel compared to like a lot of tomatins I've had, but it is comparative, it seems like, with that. I've got, uh, he's talking about, I'm going to actually be reviewing that next week. So I've got it here. I've got just a little bit left, but this will be reviewed next week. Ah, oh, Compass Box Comp Peat Monster. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, still, I'm very late when it comes to reviews. I, I always find that I can't review a bottle till I've at least gotten to the heel. I just don't no. Know. It's funny because you were the. F I'll have to admit, and I, I'm making a statement to you guys out there. I, I I have to admit when I first started reviewing things, I reviewed things when I got past the neck pour and I got to about the you know this level here. And Swami was the first one that told me that you know you need get, to give it a little more time. You need to give it down to about like right here, and you give it get it toward the, the heel of the bottle to really give it a just review. And that's that's why I came back to this one and gave it a second that, review. That, that was one of the reasons why a lot of the times when I was doing reviews with Julianne, it wasn't I, I as much as I love Julianne, we're we're still very close friends. We still like each other a lot. Uh, a lot of the times I didn't like doing reviews with him because he'd be forcing me to open bottles and doing them from the neck reviews and I wasn't uh, and I gave a lot of negative reviews during that time period of the year that Jordan was on the channel because I was doing a lot of reviews from the neck and freshly opened bottles. And I, I'd have to try to imagine what the bottle would taste like in a month from now. I like I like the way my bottles taste six, seven months down the line. That's how I like my bottles usually. I, I You're the first one that gave me the idea. And I'll, I'll give you the perfect example of exactly what you, you, you gave me. The Kalila 17 Unpeated. Yeah, that was one I I tasted a year ago or so, and the first review I gave it was a two point seven five out of five, which is horrible for me. <laughs> and it was it was rough because it was very olivey, very salty, really extremely in your face. It was just it, I just didn't find it. 
palatable at all. And then I gave it like a year, literally, over time, sipping it, giving it more time, oxidation, whatnot. I came back to the 17 unpeated for the Kalila, and it's like a 4.5 out of 5. It was that much difference just by the oxidation alone. Those, those I really, I really, I, really uh, I applaud you for giving me the the ideal of taking the time it takes to really. Well, you're one whiskey. of the few. You're one of the few reviewers of, other than myself that actually appreciate Khalil Isle. I think those. I think those robots do a great job. I understand their sister, you know, laggable and takes all the credit all the time, but I think Khalila puts out just that Khalila Isle at twelve year old. For the price, it's you know, it, it's fucking cheap, man. It's sixty dollars. It is a cheap whiskey, and it's good. Like I love that twelve year old. Um, and a lot of people like will always like, oh well, there you know, it's robotic. There's one guy pushing a button. You know what? Sometimes you don't need it to have a story and uh, and a whole fucking beauty behind it. I know we like it. That's why we pay for whiskey. But I think Kalila, fuck, even though it's mechanical and it's fucking straightforward and it's to the point, you know, it's cheap and it tastes good. And sometimes I just want to fucking drink something and I don't have to fucking think too much about it. And I'll pull out a Kalila. I get the special edition all the time. It's 13 years of age. It cost me $65. Um, it's nice and peated. Uh, it's got PX cherry cast finishing to it. And, you know, then you go over to the, the Lagable, which has the exact almost identical bottle for 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 75 dollars more of the lego one special edition which is that crazy but, like the night and day difference you get between yeah. those two <laughs> well one 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 however the lego one special edition i think is 16 years of age and the kalila is is uh 13 so it's a, there's a different age have you by chance had i mean you know, i consider myself lucky have you ever had the kalila 18 by chance that's peated no, I've had the unpeated 17 like you have. Okay. My spring. Um, I just, I've had the 12-year-old, I've had the 10-year-old, and uh, the special edition, which I have a lot of. But that's pretty much what I've had from Kalila. But they've all been great. I've never had a Kalila that – I'm not going to say that none of them have blown my socks off. But, again, they're just good, well-priced whiskeys at 43 to 46% ABV and, you know – they don't always have to be no color added and unchill filtered and cast. And not every whiskey's got to be that. Some whiskey exactly. are good, you know, and just they're just good. Like I, I don't have to always have to fork over. I don't like the fact that I feel like because of this th this whole thing that we're doing, that every time I buy a scotch, I got to fork over at least a hundred dollars in order to enjoy myself. You gotta learn to enjoy stuff that maybe doesn't have every single thing, every check mark on it. You know, doesn't mean it's bad because it doesn't check off everything on the box. Yeah, at first I was all gung ho about the whole Agua Vitae like A statement, color chill filtering, and all that shit. And now I'm kind of like, well, you know, it really may, what really matters is the price point, what it tastes like. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're right. You're 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 self pigeonholing yourself into a fucking corner, out of your fucking snootiness that won't let you fucking try things. And you know, I I, I always want to try something before. And yes, I am the king of giving negative reviews. I give lots of fucking negative reviews, but I fucking try them. I don't just fucking say like, oh, that sucks. No, I fucking try it first. I buy a bottle and I sit through it. And if I don't fucking like it, I'm gonna give a shit review. But I'm going to fucking try it first before I give a shit review. I'm not going to just say, well, that sucks. I say Dalmore sucks all the time because I've tried a ton of Dalmores and they've all sucked. So it's just the fact of the matter that I've, I've gone through it. And, and I've said it, nothing pissed me off more than the fact that I bought all those bottles. It made me mad, but it was an experience that I learned from. I learned not to buy Dalmore anymore. And people will say, well, these are pretty good Dalmores. The independent bottles are good Dalmores. And I always tell them, yeah, the independent balls might be good, but why would I support a distillery in any way, shape, or form if they can't produce a good lineup? All right? I want to see a basic lineup being produced. And if you can produce a basic lineup that's good, then I'll try your independent and I'll splurge on your, your big ticket items. But if you can't produce to me a good 12-year, uh, we'll, we'll say 10 now because everybody's doing a 10, 12, 15, not even 15 now. They're all doing a 10, 12, 
14, 15, 17, 18, 21 year old. You sound like Colin Park. <laughs> but they're all doing that now. It's all like uh, fucking. I, honestly, I, I'm going to Zig Heil while I'm fucking talking. Uh, you, know what, you know what it is? It's because all of us this decided, hey, you guys should stop with the non A statement stuff. You should do A statements. I like so it. I, I, like the, on it you know? I like the non H statement stuff for experimental. If they want to do some exper experiments, all right? But keep the prices reasonable. If you keep the prices reasonable, no problem. Keep them under $100. Keep your no H statement stuff under 100 bucks. I buy them. I do. Um, if they're experimental casts, things you want to do, like the tequila castings that's coming out now, everyone's doing in the AO and tequila cast. Now it's a new thing. Those should be the no age statement things. Like when you're wanting to try different castings that haven't really been, like the beer casting whiskeys, which some of them are big hits, like the Teeling Stout cask, wonderful. And 70 bucks under $100. Really well done. Thank you, Teeling. Um, you know, a lot of them do good stuff out there at no age statement. If it's reasonably priced, what I don't like is like, and I'm not saying it's a bad whiskey. It's a good whiskey, but like whiskey's like the lore. And I know you're a big fan of the lore, but still $200 for a no age statement whiskey. Hold on. Big fan of the what? The lore. The Lafroy lore. Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a massive fan. I, I, I'm only a fan because it's the only thing I have to, to go by versus the 18. If I had a preference, I would definitely go for the 18. Not true. Try the quarter cast, man. I like the quarter cast. Oh, I love the quarter cast. That's, that's one of my top. Half. That's a 4.25 out of 5 whiskey. Yeah. Definitely. I agree with you there. I'll go for the quarter cast go over the lore any day of the fucking week, and that cost me fucking 55 bucks. I'm not going to spend, you know, X amount of money on that lore. The lore was good. I, and again, I purchased the bottle. That's how I know I don't. And I didn't say I didn't like it. I gave it a decent review I did before. But I didn't think it was worth 200 bucks. There's no way in hell I would ever buy that ball ever again. That was a one-time purchase, and that was it. It was like... Well, what's, the, what's really tough that pisses me off about Laphroaig is to get a sherry-influenced whiskey, it's really tough... Unless you go for the lore or one of their carriages, like off offshoot, you know, I series. Always, I, I'm sick of doing this because everyone's probably annoyed to be doing this, but... Uh oh, <laughs> he's going to the cabinet. That's that's that's, oh, that's, that's, that's that's my boy when it comes to sherry cast Peter whiskeys right here. Oh, I don't I don't blame you. That's a beautiful whiskey. Oh, it's, it's, I buy it all the time. It's one hundred and seventy bucks. It's worth it to me. It fucking tastes fucking phenomenal. Um, every year they're coming out. I think it's their actually. I think it's their top seller now. I think uh, the PX sherry is the most sought at. Fucking uh, single cast from Kilo Minutes. What can I find that shit, man? <laughs> you live in Washington, D.C. Um, uh, it's know. rough. It's, it, it is really rough because I'll tell you what, what I have for Kilhoman, let me, let me just. It's do sad it. though because he, I think you guys remember, I used to always buy every Kilhoman coming up, but I stopped buying Kilhoman. I literally only buy that bottle now because I found the one that I like and it's the one that I buy because it's no longer about reviewing, it's just the bottle that I enjoy drinking. So I'm always buying it. So I, I saw the STR. I was gonna purchase it. It's 175. Is oh geez, it's high, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I was thinking about it, but I was like, I don't know if I just want to buy. Uh, a Even Canadian, that seems high. Uh, how much did you get it for? Uh oh, okay. Uh, let me do this with you. Let me okay. give you my Kilhoman prices that I have here, okay. and you tell me what you think you would go with comparatively. Okay. So the first one we've got is the the 100% Isla. At one hundred six ninety nine American, we've got the Sherry Cast ten year for one hundred sixty. We've got the two thousand eight Vintage at ninety five. We've got the Impex Cask Evolution twenty eighteen for one hundred twenty five. We've got the same thing for twenty nineteen at one hundred fifty nine, and another one that's a different cask at one hundred twenty nine. We've got a Lot Gorm twenty eighteen at ninety nine. We've got the the Macur Bay at fifty nine ninety nine, which is sixty bucks, basic sixty uh, U.S. Uh, money. The original quarter cast strength at one twenty, the port cast at one fifteen, 
the red wine at 120. The red Listen. wine, the red wine, I get it for 150 Canadian, so it would be about one after conversion rate, it'd be about 135 American. Wow, I'm spending, I'm spending a little more than you guys, so I'm spending about 20 dollars more than I should. Isn't that red wine just unbelievably it's good? Really I love good. it, even though it's 46, it's not you know, a single, it's not a single casker, it's a really, I think it was one of their best ones. The red wine cast really blew my mind. Uh, the other one I really like is uh, the additions that they do, the 8th, the 9th, the 7th. Uh, they're all really well done because they are the Mac Gear Bays, but they're aged Mac Gear Bays. They're Mac Gear Bays that have, that have aged a couple extra years, and uh, they're all done in, uh, in uh, fucking Christ, <laughs> uh, Buffalo Trace barrels and uh, ex real X, not spiced, not spiced barrels. Real ex Spanish cherry casts, and they're really. And I'm from I'm from Kentucky. I'm telling you, I'm from, I'm originally from from Kentucky. If you're gonna get a, a a a cask, Buffalo Trace is not a bad cask to get from. That's a really, 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 really yeah. good cask to get from. Sure. The only other ones we got is the Senega at seventy. Ah, uh, fuck the Senega. I, I hated the Senega. The uh, the, it's, it's, it's it's twenty dollars more. Get the Lock Gorm. Lock Gorm is much better than Senega. The, and I talked to people. The whole point of the Lock Gorm was to make up for the mistake of the Seneg. But for some reason, some people liked the Seneg, so we kept it on. But Anthony Wills, the exact re recipe of the Seneg is the Lock Gorm, but aged more. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Give me one second. Okay, Sauternes Cask 120 and the Sherry Cask at $99.99, the uh, STR at 110 that's the the run through of the Cajomans we have here available in Maryland. I mean, the SDR is not worth it for me at one seventy. Then, so I'll figure it out. All right, let's make I hear you. Working. It was online. Uh, like it's one of the few because right now because everyone's ordering online, uh, the SAQ is uh, limiting certain items that you have to like either go. And I and I'm being honest, I don't want to die from coronavirus, so I'm not going to the liquor store until the shit's over. So what I can't pick up online, I'm not buying right now. So it's just the way it is. Like there's a couple of bottles I really, really want. I wanted to get the Eli, uh, uh, old Ezra, uh, uh, the old Ezra uh, barrel proof, but they're only selling the old Ezra bottle and bond online. So I, I ordered the old Ezra bottle and bond, even though I want the uh, barrel proof, but I have to go to the store to pick up the barrel proof. And I was like, fuck that. I'll just get the bottle and bond and I'll wait till this is over. And I'll go buy the barrel proof when I can go in without having to worry about, you know, losing my dick. <laughs> For the Kilhoman, is the red wine cast matured your favorite or what is your favorite Kilhoman? Well, it's, it's the PX. It's the P PX. PX. My favorite. Why can I get that, man? I don't know. It's my favorite. Uh, it's always in Montreal. It's I think it's, uh, it's a Chicago, Montreal, and BC exclusive. I don't think they're Chicago, sold. Chicago, huh? Yeah, they're sold in Chicago. They're sold oh, okay. in Montreal. And they're sold in BC, in uh, British Columbia. So I don't think it's something they can get everywhere, but it's an exclusive. Because Kilhoman is a lot of exclusives for regions. So um, I think that the PX Sherry Cask is an exclusive for like certain regions. I can't tell you all of them. I do know that they are sold in Chicago. So I bought a ball in Chicago when I was there. I do know that they're sold in uh, Montreal because I buy them all the time here. And I do know that uh, Food Quick has picked up a ball in BC. So, oh, right. nice. If you quick get it and you can get it, that's a good sign because you guys, he's in, in way over in Vancouver. I think we're sold in Ontario because Rob Whiskey in the Six picked up a bottle and he said it was, and he's not a Kill Almond fan, but he loved uh, the, the PX Sherry guy. How can you not be a Kill Almond fan, man? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Rob, Rob, he, Rob has taste that only DH Silk can understand because I don't have that kind of money. So it's just like. No, I hear you. I'm, not, I'm with you. I'm with you, Swami, on that one. <laughs> Rob, Rob is a good dude. He's, he, he gave me a bunch of – when he came down to Montreal, he gave me a bunch of bottles like it was nothing to him. And they're bottles that, like, you know, I, I can afford to buy, but it wasn't, like, bottles I would give. Like, if you come down, I'll give you a bottle, like a gift, you know? But Rob was giving me, like, $250 bottles. He was like, here you go, buddy. And I was like, thanks. I was like, I'll take them. I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I was like, cool. Yeah. Whiskey in the six, if you guys don't know, you probably know already. Well, I'm going to have to hang this up. I have to work tomorrow. Swami, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, cut it short, unfortunately. But I really appreciate you coming by. All right. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, get 
rolling. I've been drinking, drinking, drinking. You know how it goes. But it's been great to have you on the show. And no uh, thanks so much for guys for stopping by. I really appreciate I have it. Have a beer. It's International Beer Day. Go get yourself a beer. Stop drinking so much hard liquor all the time. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite beer by the chance? Anything. No, uh, my favorite beer is, well, I always drink on my show, St. Tom Bois Stout, but I don't have any night. I'm drinking, um, it's a hot night, so I'm drinking uh, Stella Artois. They're shitty Belgian beers, but whatever. What was the first one you said, though? Uh, St. Tom Bois Stouts. Saint? Yeah. What was the, after the Saint? St. Tom Bois. Alt Bois? Ambois. Think of it, Ambrose. Ambrose, okay. In French, it's Ambois. Ambois? Um, on walls, on blaws. Okay, just, gotcha. Say Ambrose if you're Ambrose. Gonna, spell it out as Ambrose in English. In, in Très bien, monsieur. I appreciate it. I, I really do. I really, oh, really, really, oh, really. Oh, you speak <laughs> Mongoloid French. <laughs> I can't speak French. I had three years in high school. That was like twenty years ago, I, man. Come on, give me some slack. <laughs> I, I always find it. I always find it cool when I meet an American. I, when I was in, um, on pool. Like, on pool, monsieur. <laughs> no, the more the more Midwest I went, the more people spoke French, which is weird because whenever I go to New York, nobody speaks French. Like no one knows a word in French, and you think that they would because they're pretty close to Quebec. So you think there would be some sort of like you know French going on there. But everybody in New York will speak Spanish and English. But you go out west, and the more west you go. You'll actually find a lot of Americans that will know some French. I'm not saying a lot, but they'll know French, and it's like kind of cool. Yeah, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, where all the bourbon is, and Louisville, Louisville, yeah. for you other yeah. Rabbit, Frenchmen. Rabbit and Run is backstage, Alex. You're really bad. At, like I was, I was. Oh backstage. shit! Sorry, I didn't see that. <laughs> I was backstage for a half an hour before you noticed I was backstage. No, so, you're full of shit, man. Come I'm on. Really it wasn't a half hour. It was like a half an hour. Hey everybody, what's going on? Hey, I was wondering where you went. I was I was worried that you just fell off the face of the earth or something, man. Come on. <laughs> no, nah, man, not yet. I, I told I told you I had to jump out for a phone call for a few minutes. Yo, Rabbit or Red, you want to join? Me? It's my ass. <laughs> Rabbit or Red, you want to join me on my channel for uh, about a half an hour after uh, Stelix wants to go off? You want to come on with me? Yeah, yeah, I'll come over there, man. Shoot me a link. Well, thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you hanging out. If, if I could stay, I would. I have to work tomorrow, unfortunately. Sure. But thanks for, so no, much, guys, for stopping by. Yeah, yeah it's it's good time. I ride a motorcycle. My face is all fucking tanned. And look at the rest of me. I'm just like, oh, white. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like. You've been wearing a burka. <laughs> no, it's just, <laughs> when, I t uh, when I take off my helmet, uh, cause it's the only thing that I do for to get some sun is I go riding my motorcycle because you're all by yourself. There's no one around. You can't. No get, COVID. No COVID no anywhere on that. That's yeah. it. So I'm like wearing full gear so that I take my helmet off. So the only sun that's touching my skin is my face and probably my hands. Everything else is pasty, pale white right now. <laughs> Are you starting the uh, the feed there, Swami? Um, just meet me in 10 minutes. I'll start the feed guy. Hold on one second. All right, All man. Right. We'll catch you in a little bit. Good to hang out, Alex. Let's do it again soon. Yeah, definitely. Both of you guys. I appreciate yeah, you hanging yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, rather get a beer because it's National Beer Day. Start. Uh, all right, I'll go look. If for I had beer. a beer. <laughs> uh, have a good one, everybody. Slash of all, guys. I really appreciate you hanging out. I would stay if I could, but I have to work tomorrow. Uh, thanks so much, Swami, for stopping by. I really appreciate it, and uh, it's really, really fun to uh, hang out with you guys. And uh, if you get a chance to get the Tumma Tool 16, it's actually not a bad dram. And for 70 bucks, like you can't go wrong for 16 years. 70, 70 bucks for 16 year, that's a good one. Well, have fun and salon chaval, and see you guys the next one.